from wherever you're watching from, welcome in. Grey Ghost Gamers here with a special kind of tutorial that's really your ultimate guide to getting Deke overpowered AF. You're going to watch me lead you through situations and areas of the map not usually accessible this early in the game to get this amazing loadout and these bike upgrades that just aren't available when you start. Even though I'm playing on normal, these tactics you're coming to watch are the same ones that I've used on Survival 2. As you can see, we're not starting from the very beginning of the game, because for all difficulty levels, the first few tutorial missions are virtually identical and will walk you through the identical steps. Therefore, I kind of just wanted to skip those and get to this point, because it's really here that we can start to change the flow of the game. Not much, but we can start to implement a few different strategies. Of course, we're not totally able to roam freely just yet. That won't happen until we get to Copeland's because as you see, yeah, we're still restricted in Go this on. area. Get out of here, you little shits. Because there's still a few more things you got to learn about the game from this location. And you'll see pop-ups telling you certain game mechanics to make you aware of part of the lore yeah, of right. what you're running into and how you're supposed to handle it. But right off the bat, there are some items in this location, like those bottles and this kerosene, that will allow you to already craft one of the most basic items in the game that you can carry, which is a Molotov cocktail. Oh yeah, I see you up there. <laughs> Just eyeing me, seeing what am I up to? Well, you're a newt, so... For some reason, you like the rooftops. Exposed in the elements. I don't get that. Regardless, what you just saw there is me opening the trunk of a police vehicle that has a tin of ammunition inside of it. You can also find some of these tins out in the open. If you come across them, they're kind of magic in the fact that whatever weapon you happen to be carrying, there will be ammunition for that weapon. Now, the only thing I've got is a 9mm and a shotgun right now. But the whole idea is you're watching this because we want to get an overpowered loadout with machine guns, automatic pistols, small shotguns, you name it. That's what we're going to be looking for. Now, right off the bat, this particular mission is just going to demonstrate the whole idea of stealth kills. That's what this particular section of the game is showing you. How to do a stealth kill by sneaking up from some freaker from behind. Uh, yeah, don't, don't stand up deep. We don't want you to be seen. But over there, in that building that has that kind of tumbleweed and dirt, are freaker nests where these particular enemies kind of hide out as their rest area. That's where they kind of sleep. And then they come out at night to feed and to drink water. All right. Now, we're in this particular building to get a particular piece of information so that we can get a particular item. Now, we don't want to go to the left because that takes us outside, but we want to choose this door because it's in this office where there's a safe. You know, I gotta watch that freaker. And while we're standing up, we can be exposed, but this is an amazing early game item to get. And unless you're exploring the way I am, you really wouldn't even come across that because you'd be going to try and find the garage and getting the part that you need. 
which only emphasizes the need to take time during the game and explore. It's not necessarily linear in the fact that you have to go through here, you have to go through there. You can take your time. And in fact, even though the story at this point will point us to a particular direction that we need to take, I'm already going to show you how you can go off the script and deviate and do something a little different. Now, one of the few cool things is being able to search vehicles to be able to find suppressors, which in the apocalypse is more of a jury-rigged kind of thing where you're taking an oil filter from a car and attaching it to your weapon, and that suppresses the gunfire. Most vehicles, you pop the hood, you're gonna find scrap, which is also a very valuable resource that you will need for certain items. But there are, on occasion, certain vehicles in certain locations that you can find oil filters to attach to your gun. Now I'm gonna open this trunk, and if you're a little bit squeamish, I'd skip this part. Yeah, viewer discretion advised for that. Even even for the apocalypse, that's a little brutal. But considering that newts are essentially children that have turned, I do my best to kind of avoid them if I can. All they do is they just kind of jump at you like that. So they're pretty easy to avoid. You don't have to kill them. But uh, they are persistent. And there are just some that you're going to have to take care of. But for the most part, I kind of avoid the newts. Interesting choice by the developers to have child zombies in the game. And just checking now my maximum. Just like So five kerosene, just for your information, is the limit you'll be able to carry. But... Molotovs are your first, I wouldn't say major weapon, but it's definitely the first throwable item that is relatively abundant in the apocalypse. Hey, everybody's having suds around the campfire, right? We are in Oregon, after all. Beautiful country. A lot of outdoor stuff. All right, now I'm just scavenging everything I can. Because early game, you don't have a lot. You don't have a lot on purpose, right? You're supposed to start off small and work your way up. But right here is where we're gonna go off script. Boozer, you there? I found the part, I'm heading out to the highway. Yeah, I'm going to leave Boozer to his uh, situation Boozman. until I take care of these infestation nests. Hang on, Boozman. I'm coming. One of the ways to destroy them Shit. are with the Molotov cocktails. Hence all Sir. the searching Sorry, and scavenging for the items necessary to craft them. We got lucky by finding one. Well, it's not luck. The game put it there. But now we're going to take care of them. There are four in this area. And I'm just going to take care of them on my way to Rescue Boozer. So there's the one. Now i got to craft another one because I can only hold three in my inventory at any one time. So we're going to craft it. And fortunately, the... Freakers that came out of their hiding spot didn't find me. Now, there are two others that are pretty close by. One's in the tractor trailer there, and one's coming up ahead of us. You don't have to be in a super hurry. 
but there are a lot of freakers roaming around, so you're not exactly wanting to take your time either. The good thing is, is that we'll be able to escape the situation. And right there, we've already gained some experience points for skill points, garnered some trust, and made some cash at Hot Springs, which is a camp you don't know about yet. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Now, once we pass the threshold, the game will initiate a cutscene and we will no longer have to worry about these freakers chasing us. There we go. These tats are dead symbols of a dead man. Dead symbols of the lost. Is this what Boozer was talking about? Rippers just ganging up on him and burning his arm? I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> Which is another reason why we did our little adventure with Deke. These guys weren't even bothering him until we got here. I don't know, I think I'd be uh, a little bit more agitated than just giving these uh, rippers the stink eye. All right. And as we can see, the freakers that were chasing us before have moved on. <laughs> Gotten uh, uninterested in chasing Deke. Now it's time to rescue Boozer. Coming, buddy. Coming. Hang on. I've got my oil filter silencer here. Over here! You sons of bitches, get off of me! Ripper assholes, come on! Uh oh, I hear a freaker somewhere. What's going on? Oh, very interesting. Did you notice that? Well, at least before I blew her head off, <laughs> she uh, looked like she was submitting herself to the freaker. Very interesting. Get up! Fucking rippers! Gotta go. They were waiting for me. Something. I didn't see them, and then, then they were on me. Okay. No, don't look at it. One of the good things about the game, though, is just watching Deke struggle by lifting the bike, which, in reality, I've heard is quite a challenging thing to do, especially if it's loaded with gas and whatnot. But uh, Deke doesn't have that much of a problem <laughs> during most of the game <laughs> when it comes to riding his bike. Hey, uh, why don't you wait out here? Let me make sure it's all clear. Screw that. There's a bunk calling my name. And that'll be a catchphrase for a good old boozer that we'll hear quite a bit during the normal game. Just gonna reintroduce myself. <laughs> Oh, thank God. I'm gonna go out, find some shit for your arm to get my bike. Are you gonna be okay? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'll head over to that Nero checkpoint. They gotta uh, have sterile bandages uh, and painkillers. Yeah, we're not gonna be heading to that Nero checkpoint for sterile bandages. Just, just to let you know. Hey, I've got some ammo if you need it. In the footlocker by the door. Thanks. Hey. Don't take my shotgun. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot, Boozer. All right. That's okay. I'm, I'm going out to help you, but don't take one of the most powerful weapons that you currently have. That 9mm, I'm sure it's good enough, right? Well, we're not going to just walk out with a 9mm and a bat. Depending on the version of the game, when you access the locker, you'll only have the 9mm and you'll only have the crossbow. The drifter crossbow is available later in the game, 
Not that it's that much more advantageous. Crossbow will work just as fine. The tactics will still work. But if you have the Damn drifter crossbow, sorry, your arm's not gonna be fine. Just take it. Son of a bitch. I gotta find some. Now we crafted some Molotovs and uh, we're just scrounging around here at essentially base camp to load up on some supplies. Pretty much everything will respawn in its current location after a few in-game day cycles. But things that don't respawn are the ammo tins, like the one we picked up from the cop car. Once we've exhausted the supplies from vehicles like that, including scrap, they will no longer be available from those vehicles. The scrap here, though, will respawn. But from vehicles, once you've basically taken an item from it, whether it's scrap, a suppressor, or ammo from the cop cars, and even uh, med kits from ambulances, they won't respawn. Which is another reason why you want to get bought weapons from merchants versus finding weapons out in the open. You technically can't even store weapons. Now here we can't go to the third tree because there's a marauder just hanging out until Deke gets home and then he starts taking off. Maybe he was waiting for a rideshare that didn't show up. I don't know. <laughs> I just saw someone sneaking around the safe house. What the hell? What's he doing? No idea. I'm gonna follow him. See if there's some more where he came from. Deacon out. So as indicated, those particular trees are used for crafting arrows, essentially. They call them bolts. It'd be cool if they were bolts of lightning. That would be awesome. Not gonna happen. Again, you can take your time scrounging around if you want. You can't deviate too much off the line because the game wants you to, again, teach you how to deal with certain encounters. Another teachable moment in the apocalypse. Let's take care of these folks. Now, because of the level I'm playing at, you can use monoculars to mark your enemies. And it's another reason why I'm playing on this particular difficulty level, is just to have the mini-map up there so you can see what's going on. Now, for this, I'm not particularly good with the 9mm. I do love the crossbow. Not only because of its long range effectiveness. But look at the reticle. It, it's quite precise. Like with the, sh with the we with weapons, you get these crosshairs or whatever, and then the circle for the nine millimeter. But this thing, I really know what I'm aiming at. Unless you have a scoped rifle, I think the crossbow actually has one of the more precise reticles in the game. And you can even calculate the drop-off based on those two lines. Just below the two main lines pointing toward the center. Meaning the farther you are, the higher above the target you have to aim to be able to get them. I'm looking for this next guy. He's the last guy, I think. I wasn't paying attention while I was talking. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I really love that. That's the last of them. No, it was the last of them. Must have followed us here. Sons of bitches. Or was it the last of Stay us? No, it's another game. Number. Never mind. <laughs> I have so played that one too. Again. That's an awesome game. Just a few drifters looking to move in in our safe house. Oh, picked up a med kit. Like we nice. Before. 
It's time to start thinking about heading north. Let's get your arm fixed up, and then these guys had a rifle. <laughs> I'm gonna be heading to my bike, deacon out. Which is not normally the weapon of choice for marauders, Four but in this particular one, your first thing. Another med kit. Oh, right. Oh, that's awesome. And very random, by the way. As we go through trying to get Deke overpowered as possible, there are loot locations that will be going after that spawn particular items that we can use. But Marauder encounters are hit and miss. They really do not have any semblance of an attractor. Like, right there. That is not usual. You can't count on Marauder encounters to get specific items. Because to be honest, most of them, well, they're out here in the apocalypse. They're by themselves. They have no resources. Most of the stuff you'll be able to scavenge off Marauders usually will be health related to be able to get Deke's health bar up to snuff. Stuff like cloth and sterilizers to create the bandage that was taught in a previous mission prior to this where I started the game. If it's not the freaks. Because the tutorial it's missions the off the top, they're always the same. They always get you to this point. Or to the point where you have to look for the bike part in that freaker infested zone. Right now we just have to avoid them. I'm being pretty cavalier. I'm not really crouching or trying to hide all that much. On normal level, the encounters aren't horrifically devastating. This is it. This is where we left it. But traveling at night and traveling when the weather is poor brings out the freakers in spades. And uh, aren't you glad you're not here for demonstration on marksmanship because that's really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you also don't want to waste time with the bat all that much. Oh, there we go. <laughs> The bat is the least effective weapon. It would take so many hits on a freaker to take him down that you'll break the bat probably before you ever put the freaker down. Best to use something else. Fuck! Damn it, Copeland! Hey! You're from Copeland's camp? Where the hell is my bike? Hey, stop! Why, God damn it! I didn't take your bike, man! I swear! I'm not gonna kill you! Stop burning! Hey! Now we're starting off with some more ammo. And the reason why I stopped off is if you notice right there, the tin supplied Deke with rifle ammo. Get your bike? Nope. Copeland's men got to it before I did. I'm heading Again demonstrating that the tins are magical. They know what you're carrying. Therefore, it will always give you ammunition. Not a lot, especially here early game. And depending on the location as well. And it won't refill to 100%. That is also one of the randomized elements in the game is the tin will provide you with ammunition for the weapons that you're carrying, but the quantity of the ammo is not only random, but you don't want to scavenge from a tin when you already have a sufficient supply of bullets. That's just a waste. You'll always want to access a tin 
when you're down to the last few bullets to maximize the potential quantity you'll get out of it. St. John, is that you? Some son of a bitch stole my bike. I don't know nothing about that. You gotta go talk to man. <laughs> it's here yeah, at camps like Copeland's that you will spend the majority of the time dealing with the merchants that you'll be interacting with. The minimap will display the merchants that are available at a camp. There are four, usually. You've got the mechanic, you've got the merchant that sells you weapons, you've got the bounty wrangler that takes the freaker ears you collect as credits toward the camp, and you have the kitchen, where you can turn in usually any meat-related items, again, for trust and camp credits, that you pull off the corpses of the dead animals. Oh, uh, hey. Jazzy. There's where you turn in the freaker right, so ears that you in. collect, which is the form of currency in the yes. apocalypse. You do the killing, I'll do the counting. That's it. That's it. That literally is it. Yeah, okay. And we're going to visit the merchant, but uh, the game just hey, gave us a cutscene instead. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while lately. You've been too busy to notice. Nose down. Work hard, they feed you. Yeah, camper's life. Yeah, camper's life. I read a book once, Zen and the Art of Bike Repair. You ever read it? No, I didn't have a lot of time for books back in the day. Yeah, I ran a shop. Farewell. Made all the grease monkeys read it. Being a mechanic requires great peace of mind, it said. Try working on an empty stomach. That'll focus your mind. Manny, I'm looking for a bike. Yeah? Oh, oh, oh. you don't want that one. <laughs> Why not? It just came off the truck. I mean, some dumb son of a bitch left it out in the shit. Rusted up good. It rode hard, too. The fool that rode it didn't know shit about bikes. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Shot the hell this one. We just partied it out. And it didn't even have a fuel pump. We could have used oh, that. Man, fuel pump like this one? O okay. Like this one, Manny. O okay, <laughs> okay. See, now when I said fool, what I meant was. When you start the game, you the will uh, be doing a few missions. Down properly, and one of so them will end up it, like, rattling around back leaving there. the bike behind. Let's talk. Which is why we started with uh, Deke on the back of Boozer's bike when we got to Crazy Willie's. Looks like you had some trouble. Got hit hard last night. Rippers again. Twice now they've been up here. Some say looking for you and Boozer. Out in the shit, folks say a lot of things. Folks around here take care of their own. They go enough days without food. Well, you see how it is. Lake not holding out? We get a fair amount of trout. Lake's fed by snowmelt. No one left to stock it with fish. It's gonna run out sooner or later. Like everything else. As we're walking by this particular person, you'll notice she has a very interesting gun. We used to go hunting out here with the old man. We built deer blinds out here. Put down salt licks below us. Pick them off clean. Some Take some note of that, because that will be that one of the guns that we'll be able to get should you choose to accept it. Constitution. He could only see us now. America, land of the free. We are that. Saw Leon the other day. Yeah. He was bringing me something. Is that right? Folks here in a lot of pain, Deke. Oh, Leon. Thug said that he took off. No one's seen him. Hmm. Tell you what. You find his stash. You bring it to me. To me, Deke. You do that. Well. We'll see what we can do for you. The bike that your men stole, that your men parted out. Salvage, Deke. Salvage. Mm -hmm. 
I'll try to keep that in mind. Out of way, nice hat. What? No, this one. Don't you ever die. Now, hold on. Leon wore a hat like this, didn't he? Oh, Coke, I swear to God. Don't. You want to do business in my camp? You start doing some runs for me. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm here anyway. What do you got? Now that's more like it. A group of drifters has been harassing my supply runs. They've moved into the radio tower west of O'Leary Mountain. Isn't that your backyard? No, it's not, but uh, I'll take care of them. I thought you might. Well, he thought wrong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, folks, that's where we depart from the normal pace of the game. This is the first moment in the game that you are now free to roam as you wish. The game is no longer concerned about you following the path, as the Rippers would say. All right. Now, before I was rudely interrupted by all those cutscenes, you can come to the merchant at most camps and see what it says there. It sells guns, ammo, and supplies, except Copeland doesn't have any guns. He doesn't sell any weapons. No, why would he? At the beginning of the game, we are to keep Deke down. Well, I don't want to keep Deke down. I want Deke to start the game with a crazy loadout. And you're just not going to find it. The best part, though, about, again, in the same way that the tins that you find full of ammo out in the world, either within a cop car, in the trunk of a cop car, nice. or just sitting out in the open, is that the merchants, regardless of what weapon you have, will be able to supply you with ammo for that weapon. Which is a big reason why you really want to get the loadout that we're going after. Because once we come back with that loadout, even these starter camps like Copeland's okay. and Hot Springs will have ammunition for those weapons. So just by playing the game normally after that, once we've got the loadout, You'll be able to get enough cash Dick, Dick. to buy ammo oh, no. for any of the weapons that you have. I, I didn't know, I swear. Do you have any idea how much time I put into that bike? It was a drifter bike, Manny. I know, I know. I'll make it up to you, I swear. I put together a new one. <laughs> you call this piece of shit a bike? Don't, don't worry about that, Deke. <laughs> I'll keep an eye we are going to... Parts. Pimp that puppy out okay, with amazing gear. Tank, Manny, you know, the one that I got for my dead wife. You're going to keep an eye out for that one, too? Jesus, Deke, I'm sorry. Just get the fuck out of my way. I told you I... For taking care of those marauders on the mountain, we picked up 4,000 experience points. But because there were other encounters with the Freakers and experience that we gained with them. That's why we have that extra 750 to achieve the first skill point that we can now apply to Deke. And we got a thousand trust, which is nice, but only a hundred bucks. Because again, it's skewed toward the ability to deny Deke getting anything too crazy early off. Yada yada yada. Let's cut this down. And then everything related to the concurrent storylines that are happening all at once. And here we get one more little tutorial on how to use the pad on your PlayStation controller. If you have a PC, it will be different. But there's our skill point. And since we were just shown how to use the touchpad, we now can access the menu system. While there are three distinct categories in which to apply your skills based on the abilities you want Deke to have, 
each category is a little bit of a hodgepodge of items loosely related to like the melee aspect or the ranged weapon aspect or survival aspect. Each category has a tier system, meaning that you have to apply the skills to some basic items first before you unlock the next tier and then be able to apply those skills. That comes through all the experiences we're going to have, dealing with freakers, ambush camps, marauders out in the open, freakers out in the open, and whatnot. My particular goal is to look in the survival category and apply the carry that weight skill, which essentially allows Deacon to double essentially what it says, increases inventory space for crafting components, traps, and throwables. In his magical satchel, by the way, which can pretty much hold a hell of a lot of things. <laughs> that's, that's the bottomless pit satchel that we'll be stuffing with molotovs and grenades and pipe bombs and remote bombs and all sorts of medical gear. It's going to be amazing what this guy can carry. <laughs> And that little satchel. But for now, since the crossbow is pretty much our major weapon of choice at this point, might as well take a skill that will allow us to retrieve partially some used bolts when we've taken down some enemies. All right. The first thing we want to do, again, depending on the version of the game that you have, is before even leaving Copeland's camp, to go out onto our main mission of getting Deke overpowered is to upgrade the bike with a slightly larger fuel tank. Not that much larger, just a little bit. And also, moving down along to get nitrous. Even though technically Manny had no way of knowing that this was Deke's bike and felt guilty, I guess, for parting it out, I presume wanted to provide him with some sort of consolation prize for Love handing Deke. Deke back a pretty crappy bike. I'll be here. All right, we finally got all the preliminary stuff out of the way. And it's from this moment that we can now pursue the dream of getting Deke some outstanding weapons and supersizing his bike. Okay, we've gone through the sleep cycle to be able to change the nighttime to daytime and give us the maximum amount of uh, available light to deal with the first issues that we have to come across and deal with, which is heading out of the camp and hitting the broken road to be able to escape the Cascades and head over to Crater Lake region. You can see that's the route we took at the start, and then we got our gas pump there, and then for some reason they rode off in this direction only to come all the way back to O'Leary Mountain, over there. Kind of a convoluted way to go about it, but there's our mission for Copeland and to be able to heal Boozer by going to that Nero checkpoint. But we ain't gonna do that now. Uh-uh. We are out of here. And we want to make our way over to this ambush camp. There's usually the front way across that bridge, but we're going to the rear entrance. And that waypoint that the game just gave us, that that's we're not we're not following that. <laughs> that's not how we're gonna get there. I'm not going back up the mountain. Besides, we have two things that I want to do first. Jeez. That's to get gas, which, you know, with 171 bucks, it wants 50 bucks for gas? Forget that. Follow me, I know a way where we can get some gas for free. 
It's still early in game, so we're gonna have to deal with these info pop-ups. Booster, you there? How you doing? But right now, I'm off to a Nero checkpoint. Like said, that isn't fine. obvious, okay. uh, but it is near Copeland's go. camp. That Nero checkpoint, find some, After we uh, cross that bridge, bandages, though, uh, you'll want to approach that tree stump very cautiously. So because depending on the randomness that the game wants to throw our way, there's high probability that there could be marauders. Especially one with a sniper rifle. We lucked out on this one. Nobody there today. And on the higher difficulties, it's more than likely versus the normal game plan I'm playing right now. Now the Nero crash site is just over there across this little gap that we're supposed to jump. So these men, you know If you don't have nitrous, you can't make it. But we do. And if you give yourself a long enough run up, you have to hold the nitrous down to its maximum to be able to make this jump. It's a little tricky, but it is a higher elevation from where you're leaving to where you're going. So it's possible, as we've just done. And there you go. So you can see the leap off point is higher than the landing point. So even with Nitrous 1, it's doable. But let's say you're having some problems, you're trying it out, it's not happening for you, no worries. There's a much easier way to get to this particular Nero crash site. And you just have to drive a little bit further along the dirt road to make it to the backside. And all we got to do now is walk the bike up. So on the map, you can see it's not that far from Copeland's. And all you got to do is line up with that crack and just walk it up. There you go. Easy. You're also not wasting fuel by riding and then having to hit the nitrous. And we have some spectators showing up to see... Look! First meal of the day. Oh, and see, there is a Marauder. Ha! Probably spawned in after we went by. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're you're bringing a, a stick of wood to a gunfight. What what did you expect? And you're just standing there. <laughs> Let's see what I can do. Uh, gotta love the game. Good target practice, anyway. But don't let those particular shots be indicative of how good it's going to be. I'm just showing right now, there's the jump that if you want to make, and then you just continue along the road to get to the backside to be able to make the walk up. It's, a, it's literally a walk up. Why would you not do that? You feel like evil can evil? Go right ahead. And when you come around to the back, just look for propeller blades and that tells you you're in the right area. But again, not shown on the map, even while you're at Copeland's. Yes, Nero injector. And we can pick up our first Nero injector. Ooh. Ooh. I prefer stamina myself because as you can see by my aim, <laughs> I'll need to be able to dive roll or gain some distance from Freakers to be effective in any way with that 9mm. But I'm telling you, I'll be picking up a weapon that will put the 9mm to shame. And for, what's the term, aim impaired people like myself, <laughs> it'll be changing my game moving forward. Now right off the bat, off that uh, 
little area to be able to gas up and get that injector. Again, random event, but we can come across a survivor who needs rescuing. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, Grey Ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is why I need stamina, folks. Although, some could argue that maybe focus would be a better skill to have. Why don't you use the focus and uh, then you can slow things down. I don't know. It just takes me out of the game by using focus. It's one of those things where I prefer to have the stamina. As much as this is a video game about the apocalypse and a biker, it's like being able to have the focus as a superpower is just something that doesn't doesn't work for my gameplay. If it works for yours, I know it works for a lot of people. More power to you. I just I love my stamina and I love my health. Hey, hey, hey. It's okay. You're not gonna make it out here. I know where there's a camp. What? What camp? It's a camp? Where? Where? Show me. I'll go. Well, there's the only one camp right now that we know of. Peaceful Lake. Mark Copeland. It's safe there. Oh man. Thank you. Thank you. I was done for. Holy shit! I was I was a goner, you know? Whew. Thank you so much, man. Well, that gave us a little bit more trust and a little bit more cash at Copeland's. They know who I am. Keep your head down. But it's all right. As we now make our way toward the ambush camp, we're going to be taking a pretty treacherous road. If only for the fact that, depending again on the random elements, I might as well just pick up what she threw down. Scrap. No. In normal gameplay, you want to avoid paved roads as much as possible because they are favorite targets for marauders. And in this particular one, just across the bridge, you could either have a sniper spawn, which didn't happen this time, but if you're bombing it down the road and you haven't been shot off your bike by a sniper, it's possible that you'll end up getting clotheslined instead. Now the bike's pretty loud, but we didn't get marauders coming after us right away, which means they're still, we're just out of range. And uh, I have a feeling we're going to come across those guys. So we're just going to ride on past. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Run at him as I'm diving out of the way. They're still pretty uh, weak as far as uh, their capabilities of being able to take you down. But it's best to avoid them, if at all possible. As long as you're aware that when you see cars okay, and vehicles idea. overturn on the road like that, that there's potential uh, yeah, for a marauder nah, attack, nah, you, leave the bike out here, Deke, you can take the side dirt and roads and you. avoid them altogether. Boozer, no, no, you're gonna get yourself killed. Uh, you gotta wait till you're whole, brother. Uh, I'm over here anyway, so I'll take care of the nests, okay? No, we're not gonna take care of the nests. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, Bruiser, you just hang out, all right? I'll be back in a few days. I'm sure you'll be fine. Or take them out while it's still light out. There'll be more of them, but they won't be as strong. So right there, that little bit of dialogue adds to a little bit of the lore regarding the Freakers that you can keep in your back pocket. But I like to get the bike in a, 
ready to go position. Yes. And as you can see, a second Nero injector. Alrighty, it's uh, looking good for Deke's stamina. Bit by bit. Is that what this shit is? And now we're going to take on the ambush camp by entering it from behind. Not the strongest arsenal in the world, but they will do for this encounter. Apparently, these hanging corpses of Freakers are quote unquote a booby trap. A bunch of murderers and thieves, and I can't let any of them escape. And there's a little bit of a cutscene that plays, and then once you get to the freaker that's supposed to freak you out, it's actually not that difficult. Not much of a threat. And doesn't really alert the camp, so I don't know exactly know what the point of that was, but before we go through, I always like to crouch. Only for the fact that we don't want to be standing completely upright when we get to the other side, which he does for a moment, and then you can crouch. Now, this is not a bad place, but you can get trapped, which is why I like to go right there. It offers a hell of a lot of protection, but still gives you ample opportunity to take out the marauders, even if they try to sneak up on you. I'm going to go to my weapon of choice in this uh, particular playthrough. And pardon me if I don't talk a lot while I fight, because I'm not one of those guys. First one down, now the rest of you. This stealth business isn't going to last long. Somebody will notice a dead corpse. Well, there we go. <laughs> Here we go. Nope. Oh, I got hit from somewhere. On your left, buddy, on your left. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't need the med kit. Reload, reload. What do you think now, huh? Somebody shoots back. How do you like that? Ha, he hit the rock. <laughs> but thanks for standing still while I load it up. Come on. There we go. Hide, you son of a bitch. Ugh. Damn it. Patience. Patience. That's a little far. It's a little far. Yeah. I think I'm aiming a little too high as well. Can't be that many left. I'm not paying. Oh, there we go. Okay. Five left. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Switching from guns to missiles. <laughs> I don't know why. I just. It's not like I've used the crossbow like in a ton of playthroughs or anything. It just. I find it just just a really good long range weapon with a great aiming system. 
Like the reticles on those rifles and guns, and especially the nine millimeter with the circle. Ah. <laughs> Come on. Nah, he's not gonna come out. He's not coming out, he just... He knows what's coming, he just saw his friend got an arrow in the face. Yeah, I gotta move up. No, you don't have me, come on. Be realistic. There's like two of you left. You gotta stop moving sometime. Well, yeah. Oh, and there you see, I picked up a bolt. Thanks. Ugh, that was a miss. Jeez. There we go. Okay, one left. <laughs> yeah, one left is usually the sniper at the front, which is another reason why we prefer choosing the rear entrance. Oh, he's uh, not where he's supposed to be, but moved up a little bit, I guess. But went back to his original duty. Ah, you guys got it taken care of, right? That's it. You're done. And while we're here, like that, huh? yeah, Man, let's trade that guy. bat for an axe. <laughs> You're sons of bitches. <laughs> All right, let's see if they got an underground bunker around here. Now, before I get to the bunker, I want to go get the bike. <laughs> and the biggest reason for clearing out this ambush camp in the first place is not because there's anything special at this camp in ways of materials or items or craftables or anything like that. No, that's not the reason why I'm coming here. I'm coming here because it's at this ambush camp where we leave the Cascades. Yeah, I'll take a bandage, because I know there's a bandage over here. I saw it when I walked by. Yeah, let's, uh... Craft. Which is another good habit to get into, is as soon as you use an item, if you have the ability to craft it, do so until you've run out of supply for it. And then that way you'll be able to pick up items related to the crafting of that item. And be able to sock it away in deep Satchel. This is, this is the reason why I chose this particular location. Because this is where we're going to exit the Cascades from. And before I do that, I'm going to loot everybody I can after I've opened up the bunker. Not that in this particular case the bunker is going to reveal a crafting recipe of any real relevance. But I have noticed, on occasion, depending on where you are, what region you're at, if you've gotten a particular craft recipe from a bunker, and you delay looting the corpses until after you've gotten that recipe, the corpses could randomly provide materials to be able to craft that particular recipe. And another reason to visit an ambush camp, as you can see how the fog of war obscures a lot of the map, with each ambush camp, they have a map. And that map Looks like they marked it up good. All right, some more experience points on our way to the next skill level. A little bit more cash and trust. Let's see, what craft recipe are we gonna get? Ooh. Now we know how to put nails through a bat. 
<laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> thanks, I suppose. Again, I appreciate that it's early game and they don't want to have Deke with the ability to craft like a super weapon or something like that, but a bat with a nails through it? Anyway. All right, so Fog of War lifted for the area of influence around that ambush camp. And bye-bye, Boozer. <laughs> Gonna leave you with your arm for a while. He'll be fine. It's okay. Third degree burns. No medical supplies. I'm sure he'll make it. Now I'm too close to the tin there that I'm just gonna fill it up. And there's a nice scoped rifle. But I'm not too concerned about necessarily picking up weapons from these corpses. Although there is one weapon that if you are playing the early game you'll want to get your hands on this, the SAF. Better than nothing. True that, Deke, true that. And not only better than nothing, most marauders you do encounter in the world are carrying this weapon and we'll have ammo for it. Now, we're on a mission here to get far more superior weapons than what we have in hand. But you can definitely continue the main game and just be aware that this is the most prevalent weapon that you can find out in the open before you're able to purchase anything. Yeah, it's getting late in the day. Bad weather, never a good time to head out. Freakers come out when the bad weather hits. And even though that didn't take up a horrendous amount of time... Yeah, we're not finding a lot, eh? Again, like I mentioned before, it's mostly survival stuff. Rags, sterilizers. It is kind of incredulous to find so many medicinal items out there. As I would imagine in the apocalypse, anything dealing with uh, health-related issues would be the first to go and the first things to run out. But I guess these folks are the ones that went everywhere and ripped off everything. <laughs> Which is why they have so much of this stuff. And you can see, most of it is maxed out already. We just don't have the ability to sock away a, a heck of a lot of stuff. Which is why I do make getting carry that weight a priority in most of my playthroughs. Even if the most advanced weaponry is still to come later in the game, having that ability early on just makes everything a little bit easier to take. Yeah, 417. Weather's crap. No guarantee that'll change with the sleep cycle, but down we go. Because the trek to Crater Lake will be an adventure in and of itself. All right. And you can see, as I open the locker, even though we picked up the SAF, it's not bought, therefore it will not appear as an item that we can carry from region to region or will be available from region to region. This is something we have to carry and hopefully not lose. We have this piece of junk. <laughs> and we can fill it up at Copeland's and then of course the crossbow, but that's it. And the reason I empty the magazine and then go back and purchase some more ammo is to just max everything out. It's like Boozer says, I hear a bug calling my name. 
All right. And poof. Magically, we're in daytime. Yeah, I skipped over the animations. This cutscene with the light, night going to daytime and all that kind of stuff. Boring. I hope you're ready for the big adventure because this is it. This is where I leave the Cascades behind and head over to Crater Lake. Let's get Deke going. All right. The way out is this rock formation right here. Incredulously enough, so close to Copeland's camp, we can get out of this region. Here we go. Here's the step-by-step. -step. There's a crack directly in front of you, which is why I parked the bike the way I did. And you start up that and head left. Then you stop before you get to that rock and hang a right. You'll want to line up so that you hit the ledge and not the rock as you make a sharp left turn. So get to the ledge and that will get you up and over. And there we are, leaving the Cascades behind from this ambush camp. Unfortunately, that is the edge of the world, and we can't leave a waypoint in any region over there. We can leave it there, but that's not going to help us much, because the path it's showing ain't going to help us to get to where we need to go. We are going to be bypassing all of Lost Lake, all of Iron Butte, and using this end of world region to get to Crater Lake. We want to take a tack following the grass until we see that little hill in the distance, and then go up the hill, but not too far lest you want to fall off the edge of the world and never come back. No, of course you'll come back, but that's it. That's the edge of the map. And we eventually want to head to the snowy mountains off in the distance to be able to cross over from Lost Lake into Crater Lake. But first we have to get out of the Cascades and cross the boundary into the Lost Lake region. We still have a crappy bike with not a lot of gas, so I want to use gravity as much as possible. And once you see that rock, please climb up on that rock to avoid one of the pitfalls of crossing the border, which is usually indicated by a funky texture. Because the possibility of driving into oblivion and having to redo it again is real except at this point. This rock is the bridge. We don't have to worry about it at all. We can just cross over, the, the, the game will glitch a little bit, and now we can easily get into the region. We find the grass line and follow it. because again, we have no real way of marking anything. And we just avoid the edge of the world there. And you can see we're bypassing Lost Lake completely. It's fairly straightforward once you get to this point. You just follow the ridge line. And you can even see in the uh, texture there's a groove or a line that's basically pointing you in the right direction. Follow it along. I'll we'll have to go up the hill a little bit because the rocks are determining the boundary there.
And we just keep going up the mountain, which is draining our gas as we go. I wouldn't advise flooring it, but we continue on straight, follow the grooves, and don't worry about that big rock. It's a hologram. <laughs> it's designed to trick you into thinking that there's a big obstacle you can't overcome. Uh, just drive through it. You're good. Once we pass that rock, we can go straight a ways and again use gravity at every opportunity. But we want to be sure we avoid sticking to the rocks too closely, otherwise we end up in a deep chasm going down and expending a lot of fuel trying to get back up. Which is why we want to avoid that ravine in the first place. Anytime you can get up a hill and use it to coast, I would suggest that. Again, just for save fuel, because we have so little of it. And I'm sure you've noticed there are no gas stations up here, and there is nothing that will provide any gas cans for Hello, us to fill up. Squatter camp. The sons of bitches have been setting up ambushes around here, yeah? Now, if you hear that dialogue, you're on the right track. Because now you can see the ambush camp. And once you get into the grove of birch trees, you know you're on the right. Now, just be careful. If you get too close, they will start shooting at you. <laughs> like that. Again, it's uphill most of the way. Once you get past the birches, Follow the groove. Just don't go too fast. Because there's another portion of the map that disappears into oblivion. I think I avoided it by heading down. Yeah, right there. If you're bolting it, you just might scoot right over the top of that ridge and end up in oblivion. And if you haven't made a save, you're starting back pretty far. Now you can ride, follow the edge of the world here, and when you see this little opening, that's where you hang a right and start taking the ride up the mountain. You can see right there the literal edge of the world, just along that line. And make as many quick saves as you think it's worth for your trip. They'll be a lifesaver if you happen to scoot off the edge of the world. For the rest of it, up the mountain we go, we just find a path that we can take. There's nothing inherently special about one route or the other, because at the very top, of this ridge line is the next boundary from Lost Lake to be able to go to Crater Lake. Which you will be able to tell by the funky texture. Goes all the way across the top and there's Lost Lake. Never even visited it. But we will on the way back. Make a quick save. I usually like to take a little bit of a run up and hit the nitrous as soon as the front wheel crosses the boundary. Oof. All right. Here's where it gets a little tricky because our exit is to the left and there are invisible walls that we won't be able to see until we run into them. But if you look for these pine trees that have that snow partially up the trunk, you can follow those. And then when you see the pylon for the ski lift, ride toward it. And then again, take note of these tall pines. And then you can slalom your way through them 
There's some more texture indicators to let you know the direction you need to go. And if you've run out of gas at this point, the best part is this is downhill. You can coast. You just slalom left and right of each of these tall pines until you get to this rock, at which point, I'll just take a look. Yeah, it's mostly white out. You can't even really follow the follow the map where you're going. But once you've crossed over, you at least get a little bit of a sense of where it is. But our exit point is just to the right and down. Once you make that right, just go straight on down, coast on down. And then make your way to this section. And essentially we are, we still have a little bit of gas left, but we are now in the Crater Lake region. We just have to get over this rock. Now if you haven't made a game save, you can try by going up and down. <laughs> this is for if you've run out of gas and trying to, I, I just didn't go far enough. Now, can I recover the bike? Oh, I can. All right, let's do it. And where is it? Now, fortunately, this horde hasn't spawned in, so you don't have to worry about that. But where's the bike? Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I ain't walking that. <laughs> yeah. Did I mention about making quick saves as you traverse the mountain? Definitely uh, need to do one just before you <laughs> just before you make the attempt to get down here, which is what I did. So now I do still have some gas in the tank, so I'm gonna floor it and hit the nitrous too, and then just save myself a little bit of trouble. And again, from here, all you gotta do is coast. We're not that far from a gas station. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow this path, past the feeding ground, and I'm gonna stop at that blue house right there. Yeah. It's gonna take a little bit of time to repair the thing. So now we're in Crater Lake. And yeah, there's a gas station down there, but there potentially could be marauders as well. And the last thing you want to do is pull up and be attacked. But no need, because there's a gas can right there. And there's one in the back. And of course, there are infinite gas cans. Meaning, not only will they respawn, but they have unlimited fuel in them. I could probably fill up this bike, do donuts for an hour, empty it, and then fill up the can all over again. That should be it. It's a mechanic I'm sure they originally intended to be a little bit more difficult, like having to find fuel. But the fact that these are infinite gas cans kind of kind of defeats the purpose, I suppose. But then again, being in this region this early to get weapons and bike upgrades Making the game difficult defeats the purpose of that. <laughs> However, that's why we're all here doing what we're doing. Make life in the apocalypse just a little bit easier. Anything in the garage? No. All right. We're going to make our way down to that particular service station because there's a minor loot location right there. And we're just uh, going to approach from the back so that we can avoid the marauders. But right up there on the roof, you already can pick up some very interesting collectibles. Pipe bomb proximity mine. Now let's see. Are there marauders? Oh yeah, there they are. Good thing I didn't pull up to that pump. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna engage too much with these guys. Thought it was fun to do that. And we're just gonna scooch on along here. Avoid the rest of them. And pick up the second best melee weapon in the game. So we're not even in the region for a few minutes. We're already able to gas up, no problem. And upgrade our melee weapon. And it's the second best in the game. There's our path right there at that train engine. And you can see where we came in at the Horde Cave, past the house with the blue roof, and ended up here. Now, not only that, being able to pick up the second best melee weapon in the game, but we're going to scoot on over past this bridge and go to a Horde Cave and pick up another injector. At this point in the game, the Horde has not spawned in, but the Injector is just sitting there, waiting okay. to be scavenged. Oh, what's in here? Another Nero Injector. Good. Is that what this shit is? After this, the priority is to find a place to sleep. And the only way we can do that is either attacking an ambush camp or finding a Nero MMU, mobile medical unit. And there is one along the way. As long as we ride up this trail. The ambush camp is to the That's left. You can see the tower. I gotta clear them out. I gotta make it safer to ride through. Yeah, here. we're not gonna worry about the nests right now. I'll come back later, finish burning out these nests. But we wanna get past this particular camp. They tend to have a sniper there. And there's a nice little camp there. No marauders this time, so we lucked out. Yeah. We're far enough away they won't see us. A raider camp. Bunch of mean sons of bitches, aren't you? How many ambushes you set this week, huh? Oops. Lights on. Hello. Now we just have to get through this tunnel. And there'll be an MMU on the other side. Another nest zone. I gotta burn this shit down and make it safer. Yeah, he's talking about nests that are directly above our head. In that area, with the houses. But it's important to take note that upon arriving at the MMU, as we approach it, is the beginning of phase one of our pursuit to acquire leveled up weapons at Wizard Island. I'm blind, no, I'm I'll be back later. Finish burning you out. And there we go. This will be our first port of call, as we really need a base of operations to retreat to. Now I'm swapping to the crossbow, because it's a wonderfully silenced weapon in order to take down these speakers. And I'm not using ammunition, and I'm not using the suppressor. Oh, there's a tree there. And I love the fact that's just one shot down. If I had to use the pistol, that piece of junk, probably be a couple of shots. Be wasting some bullets, which I don't have a lot of capacity in the gun to waste. And the best part, too, is... Remember that skill that we used to be able to retrieve bolts, which we've already done before? Well, now we can even pick one up off the ground. 
And you can see we go from four to five. It's not always going to happen, because depending on how the bolt hits something, it ends up being destroyed. But even if it gives you back 10%, still better than nothing. I'll pick that up. As usual, I like to have the bike ready to go at a moment's notice. Make sure it's gassed up. I heard something. I'm trying to see where that that red indicator is like showing there's an enemy nearby, but I just don't see him. I don't know where it could be. It's like he's close by, then he's roaming off. Oh. It's almost like he's under something. Yeah. Oh, the crafting for the Molotov. All right. This thing started. Green lights, green lights are good. God green damn it. Damn it. That's gonna bring them all down on me. Uh. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Finally. Shut the hell up. Finally. Jesus. Anymore? Yeah. Ah, I, well, I can craft some more, but yeah, let's see if we let's see if we have better luck with this thing. Oh, not bad. Where are you going? Left, right, doesn't know which way he's going. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, bye bye suppressor. I hit him. This guy's taking a lot. Nice. Oh, jeez. I think she was swinging at me as I hit her. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, that is going to have one heck of a migraine in the morning. Anything I can scavenge while I'm here? I already took the tree. Oh, there's more ammo. Might as well. I don't listen to snow. Am I? No, I'm all good, but there's a. Yeah, I think everything I was able to craft, I craft. The attractors I picked up from those marauders that I first encountered. That was a bonus. Definitely your playthrough will not necessarily equal mine. Okay, it's getting late. But before the sun goes down, I can hit That infestation zone that Deke was talking about through the tunnel. I never did finish burning out this nesting zone. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it! Because we've got the Molotovs. And there's only three in this zone. There's the one house back there. There's the other shack over there. And then there's this cave right here. All right. I'm just letting the stamina regenerate a little bit. And that's good enough. Let's go. Well, I got awake for some reason. 
I guess the noise woke them up and they're out and about. Gotta be close to the nest. I can smell it. Now where is it? One more. God damn this. That's gotta be close. And I am out of here. Yeah. Not gonna hang about. The weapons I have aren't uh, great. Okay, well I... Yeah, I just want to get the hell out of there, but I kind of kind of blew by all those uh, important indicators there with the skill point. What? No. No, forget that. That's there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. I'm I am not at trust level 1 at Wizard Island. That is a glitch. There's no way in hell that uh, <laughs> just taking out one nest did that. Yeah, no way. Yeah, let's just take a quick look. I, I'm pretty sure if we go to the inventory, at the bottom left there, it shows you which camps you visited and what your status is in the way of credits and trust and haven't even visited Wizard Island. Therefore, there's no way that uh, that, was, that was an accurate uh, representation of reality. But we did do two very important things, which was opening up the MMU. So there's our volcanic legacy. And because we took out the nest zone, we've just added to our trust and our cash over at Wizard Island, which means should we have a weapon in our locker, we can refill its ammo. Now I'm just gonna scoot on over and advance the day so that it's seven o'clock in the morning to be able to take on the next two, which is this infestation zone there and that ambush camp over there. And that's what we're on to do next. Yeah, we missed the animation for the sleep, but I'm sure you're not missing that. We're just getting right to the action. Murdering the next day, I've seen these assholes before, and I gotta take them out. Yeah, we'll take them out, but we're just taking out something else before. When it comes to difficulty, I'd say taking out these infestation zones is far easier than dealing with ambush camps. Regardless of the fact that, yeah, there are freakers and they'll chase you. But that's one of the reasons why I load up on stamina, just to be able to get out of there. Again, with the weapons I currently have and the There's aim no that you've seen me demonstrate, burn. do I really want to get caught up in the midst of a dozen or so freakers? No. No thank you. <laughs> Killing Freakers will give you more experience points. Therefore, in that sense, it might be worth taking them out. But the benefit to me is negligible, and I'd much rather do this, deal with a task, and take out an objective, rather than dealing with the individual Freakers. Because dealing with the objective is far more advantageous than, you know, worrying about like eight or ten freakers and getting experience points from that. That's not going to be the deal breaker or the deal maker in terms of advancing our abilities and getting to skill points closer or faster. With that infestation zone out of commission, that's two infestation zones and having opened up the volcanic byway Nero MMU, that's three out of the four tasks that you can complete relatively quickly and relatively all in the same area, which is fantastic. Now there's usually a sniper up there. So I don't know what happened there. 
Okay. Well. For the for the times that I've done this particular ambush camp, I can never get close enough. Oh, there it is. It just spawned in. Poink. I can never get close enough without them spotting me anyway. But I recently found by driving up to that dump truck, I can get a reasonable advantage on these guys. And look at that. I just I just love it's so crazy how overpowered the crossbow actually is in comparison to the weapons that you can have. I just I just it's just it's one of my now favorite early weapons. I never used to deal with it before. But you just like anything, you get practice on it and you understand what the reticle actually is showing you. And you can be pretty accurate from pretty far. Much better than trying to use the SAF, even with the suppressor. Now I'm planting the proximity mine there because one of the camp inhabitants will sometimes come out of there. And as you can see, by having a rock in my hand, it essentially is the poor man's version of survival vision without actually having the skill. You can do this in a challenge as well, but hold, hold, having that rock in hand, depending how far you are from the enemy, will allow you to see that enemy's position. Well, they already kind of know. <laughs> With bodies bodies falling all over the place, I, they're, they're, they're slightly alerted. They may be a little agitated that their comrades are dropping like flies. Hey, what? But it's not a general alert. They have an inkling that something's going on, but they still don't know. What the hell? Yeah, what the hell? Oh boy, moving target, moving target. Slow up, slow up, How there we go. You ambushed down there, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're not in full attack mode. They just know something's going on. Oh. Bye. Thanks for playing. Yeah, that's pretty good distance. And if you play that back and watch the mini map you'll see when i throw the rock that there's a little tiny tiny indicator showing where the rock is being thrown not that it's really all that helpful it's just huh, that's an interesting detail i never really noticed before yeah they're hunkered down over there so i'm moving to a different uh location This one's always a tough one to get. Did he see me? How could he have seen me? Well, he's not going to see me anymore. Anybody coming? No? Nope. Again, it's like, did I alert them? Are they on alert? I don't think so. Yeah, and now somebody's over there noticing the dead body, but... <laughs> if I could only trade the skill I have with this for another weapon, that'd be awesome. That, that explosion was from the mine I planted because the Marauder Heavy that has an MG45 in his possession came out of the bunker. 
I don't think it did much damage to him. <laughs> Man. I just try not to get flanked. That's the only thing I always worry about. Oh. There's another one. I've got you now, asshole. Two, three. Yeah, counted the three. So you know how to count to three. Okay, that's great. I'm happy for you. Yeah, they, they're on alert now, for sure. So far, the stealth campaign is working out. Hey, Drifter. Come on out. Give up. We got food, water. You don't have to be like this. No, sir. <laughs> ah, there's somebody glitched out in the back. Well, don't have to worry about glitching out anymore. <laughs> oh. Look out! Yeah, that, look at that. MG45. My little piddly little bow and arrow isn't going to do much against that. Get survival vision going. There we go. Yeah. Never noticed that, that the rock being thrown actually shows up on the map. Nice! Gotta be somebody close by. Oh yeah. Yeah, one more go. Okay, time to switch to the heavy weapons. I'm out of missiles. Switching to guns. <laughs> yeah, I like Top Gun. Yeah, if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, I'm just thinking. You know, how do I, how do I take on this guy? I, I mean, he is armored to hell, so I gotta I gotta stay in cover as much as I can. Oh, well, he just. Yeah, I know where you're at too, pal. I just gotta get his helmet off. There we go. Is that it? Nice. Is that all you got? Yeah, that's what I thought. Next time you set up an ambush, don't pick on the wrong guy. Well, we look like the type to have an underground bunker. Yeah? Well, I'm glad for me I was using all those uh, bolts from my crossbow because if uh, taking on that heavy is any indication of the kind of time I would have had if I tried to shoot people, ha! no, I would have been dead. <laughs> Besides, there's not a lot of ammunition for that. Okay. Now we will lift the fog of war. Hey, okay, this is handy. A map. All marked up. Yeah, and that. And we picked up another skill point. And we're more than halfway to getting level one at Wizard Island. And a stamina cocktail. Beautiful. Guess that's that right up my alley. Not anymore. Yes, sir. That's exactly another kind of reason why I kind of go towards stamina. Because you can get the stamina cocktail. After only the second ambush camp, actually. Now that I think about it. Time to keep going. Pick our poison. 
Now at this level normal, it only takes two to unlock the tier. At higher difficulties, you would have to unlock all three before moving on to the next tier. So that changes as well, depending on the difficulty level that you've chosen to play the game at. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I picked up one from uh, before, one skill point, didn't use yet. Use it now. All right. This is a very good place to be in. And you can see the maps opened up even more by opening up the ambush camp. There are only two ambush camps in the Crater Lake region. One is here, and the other is in the southwest corner of the map, bottom left. Totally out of range right now. But we've cleared four objectives, and we're already halfway to our goal of getting amazing weapons from Wizard Island. Now I'm going back out to loot everybody. But in the interests of efficiency, I just want to quickly show you that at this camp, after having taken down the heavy, you can actually pick up this weapon, an MG-45. A nice heavy horde killing weapon that's very useful to have and you can pick it up. If this is all you even came into the region for, it's certainly better than what you'll get in the Cascades. So I've gone through all the looting. I picked up a frag grenade and a Molotov, but now I'm out of here. Because the next thing I want to hit on this side, while I'm on this side of the map, is another ambush camp on the other side of the mountain where I can start accumulating trust and cash for Diamond Lake, which is where all the bike upgrades are gonna happen. So the ambush camp we passed on our way through the tunnel to get here is my next target. That's what I wanna go after. Like Deke said earlier to Boozer, I'm already over here. <laughs> Might as well take him out. And along the way, there is another great location. It's, it's a marauder camp, but it isn't populated. And in that marauder camp are a ton of supplies. And I'm just going to go over there and check it out and see what else I can scavenge. Staying off the main roads for the most part. But yeah, right here. This is another Marauder camp. But there's no Marauders in it at this point in the game. Now there's only newts down there. Nothing. Nothing too important. But I will take the time to scavenge this place. I won't spend too much time, but there are, but there's some kerosene and a bottle or two that I can pick up to replenish my Molotov supply. Because kerosene is not as plentiful as you might think. It's all, it's almost three o'clock. Uh, the ambush camp is going to take some time to deal with, so you know what? Moving out. Fortunately, there's a nice shortcut just to the other side through this cave. And not only is a shortcut to the ambush camp... Yeah, another beacon. Another chance to juice Deke up with some stamina. Let's see if it still works. In case you're wondering why I am not carrying the MG45, well, I don't have a suppressor for it, and it's a pretty fast and loose kind of weapon. It's more like a spray and pray kind of weapon where 
dealing with an ambush camp requires a little bit more of a surgical approach, in my gameplay at least. I'm sure there's some of you that are just bold, daring, and want to go in guns blazing, so having that MG45 isn't a bad thing. But I need to go in quiet. Turn around. There we go. <laughs> but that that's not really a good hiding place down there. Come on, come on, come on. Oh boy. I can always retreat into the cave, but Yeah, with all the running around, I just... Okay, there we go. The, the, the crossbow is just too slow of a weapon. Having said that... How do you like it now? Uh, I like it. <laughs> but there, there's that guy who's shooting at me. I think he's got a helmet on, so it wouldn't... Uh, having a bow and arrow is not going to do much. Ah, damn. Oh yeah, they're down. There's a stump I can hide behind. Hold it. Nice. The good thing playing at this uh, level normal too is that a body shot will kill them. Therefore, it's not important to get a headshot all the time. I just like to try. But at this uh, difficulty level, it's... Uh, It's good that the crossbow is a one-shot weapon. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I'm being hopelessly optimistic about this thing, but I doubt. Yeah, no, time, time to move up there, buddy. Come on. Okay, now, now I'm just like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm just wasting. I'm wasting shots. Time to move up. I mean, that is a hell of a weapon he's got. I just got to get his helmet off. Come on. All right. That ain't, that ain't working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know what? I'm, I still have like half the camp to take care of. And I think there's a whole bunch of guys over here. Oh, yeah. There we go. Another reason to go for the headshots is you notice the body kills are 50 points and the headshots are 75. All these experience points go toward getting a skill point. Therefore, the more you can try and get increased points from stealth kills or headshots, the sooner you'll be able to accumulate enough points to get a skill point. I thought it was just a body shot, but that's all right. I don't like that sniper. Not liking that sniper at all, but I don't see them. There are only three guys left. Okay, there's that one guy. He's running away from me. I think that's the guy with the rifle right there. Yeah, out in the open. Uh... Well, <laughs> I guess I'm using the SAF. Where's he going? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. All right. And there's a sniper. The other guy went away. It's a little bit more accurate, but he's he's not in, uh, not in my range. There we go. And the sun's going down too. I'm probably going to be here at night, but at least I'm here. And I'm able to use the camp as a place to sleep at. Which is another reason why looking at the clock before and going, eh, I might be able to get to the other objectives for Wizard Island in time. Because it is all the way across the map. This was just closer. I'm just trying to see if there's anybody within range that I can see. <laughs> Might as well throw it. And now I'm picking up double the plant life as well because of that skill. Now I'm not too concerned that it's nighttime. Because I'm at the ambush camp already. Where is everybody? They're all hiding. Did I get the sniper? Where's the sniper? Oh, there's that guy. Yeah, what happened to the sniper? I guess maybe that was the sniper? I don't know. There we go. One more left. That helmet. And who's left? Whoa! Okay. All right. I just want to. I want to keep this wall between him and me because he's got a hell of a weapon on him. He starts letting loose with that thing on me. It's gonna be bad. Right, he hasn't started shooting. Camp's clear. Now you know how it feels being on the other end of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And here's another MG45. <laughs> Just gotta find it. Here's the hatch. Yeah. There yeah, we go. One. And watch the ammo tin. So you can see machine gun ammo. Yep. These are magic tins, I'm telling you. Another reason why I also want to make sure I have the amazing arsenal of weapons that I can get from Wizard Island because every tin in the world can use that. after this will have ammo for those weapons. Those magic tins, they're amazing. Now this particular ambush camp is associated with Diamond Lake and not Wizard Island. Therefore, when we open this puppy up, we'll be accumulating points for that. Hello, a map. Looks like they marked it out pretty good. Yes, they did. So you can see right there, just this one ambush camp. Ah, smoke bomb. That's useful. Now that's useful. The Nero checkpoint. Yeah, you can see Shemult College. And it's associated infestation zone. Again, that's a great location. And the objectives there will contribute to Diamond Lake and being able to pimp out our ride, basically. 
And now we're just going to retrieve the bike, loot all the corpses, and skip on ahead to the next portion of the mission. Now it's important, because there are infestation zones, but more importantly hordes, I want to get to Wizard Island and get the weapons to deal with those things. So I'm abandoning the Highway 97 region for now. I want to get back to Crater Lake region. I'm going to scoot on through, back, the, back toward the tunnel, past the camp, and then back to Wizard Island. Okay, we're out of here. Wasn't too much things of note during the corpse scavenging process. I picked up a pipe bomb and a couple of caches of gunpowder, but nothing too crazy. And I'm going to be dealing with another ambush camp, but fortunately, along the way, we've already accumulated some trust and some cash at Wizard Island, which will give me the ability to actually buy suppressors. Because unlike Copeland's camp, where you need a level 1 trust to even get a suppressor, those guys are really stingy. I can travel all the way over here to the Crater Lake region and pick up suppressors right off the gate. So back through the camp we go. Traveling the broken road is never a good idea for very long. Especially when you do see vehicles and such. I'm on the right track, but I'm gonna go off-road at this point. And see if I can mark it. Yeah, I can mark it. I'm not gonna follow the route along the road it suggests, but at least now I can see on screen on the left there, 700 meters, that the marker is pointing me in the right direction. At least letting me know I gotta go over that away if I wanna hit my objective. Oddly enough, yes, I am flooring the bike. <laughs> and it just ain't going very fast. Still keeping in mind we have that crappy gas tank, but. To be honest, in this region, there's so many places to get gas. You'd be you'd be hard pressed to run out of it. I mean, I think initially the devs wanted the fuel situation to be a little bit more difficult, considering it is the apocalypse, and it just really isn't like that. So we're passing the marker now, and part of the tasks left to do to get to trust level one at Wizard Island will require us dealing with a hostage situation. Hence another important reason to visit Wizard Island to make it one of the options that we can send hey, a hostage to. Uh, and I'm just going to show you, well, hey, you what the target is. You here before. There we go. The PPSH-41, Little Stubby, Same and RPD. Deacon. And you can see, so, uh, you're the guy to come I can fill up my MG-45, you need guns, I and need guns. I can get suppressors. It. it was never made, you know what I mean? Uh, great. For mind. either one of those. Which is odd, oh, considering Copeland, you gotta, you gotta work for it, you gotta earn it. <laughs> Do those camp jobs for him, and then maybe if he's nice, he'll let you have a suppressor. Whereas, I just come over to Wizard Island, hop on over, get suppressors as you need them. You could literally visit Wizard Island immediately and get suppressors. Dive! <laughs> At least the AI is smart enough to not to dive into your path. But like I said, there are three more tasks to complete 
in order to buy those weapons that we just saw at the merchant and they are all on this side of the map and having the RPD and the PPSH-41 to deal with hordes that we will be dealing with in order to build up the trust and cash for Diamond Lake will be a lot easier to handle with those weapons. The MG-45 is not a bad weapon. I could probably take him out right now, but I want to get to these situations. And why I'm looking up there is because one of the hostage scenarios would be spawning at that location, up at the top, at the cliffside. No luck on this ride through. Now there's another location that can spawn in a hostage situation and it is on the way to the ambush camp which also by the way has an MMU at that location so we can take care of two out of the three tasks in one shot and I literally mean in one shot. Before we get there though I want to stop off at this house well, you know why. That's right. It's time to juice Deke up. On a higher difficulty level, there wouldn't just be newts. I've run into some freakers, and they will chase you into the house if you if you let them get close enough. But I think this is this is okay for this situation. But the tactic is the same. Stop off at the house, hop in through the window, grab the Nero injector. And fortunately, the criers are not flying. Is it too early? Cool. So that blue question mark on the map is indicating our second possible hostage scenario. And it's going to be up on that hill, but I don't see anybody roaming around. That's not a good sign. Let's just go up there. Now, as soon as Deke... Yeah, as soon as Deke arrives at these uh, bushes, he would normally say something uh, that would trigger speech to let us know that he's got to take care of... Uh, and by the way, <laughs> those aren't dead bodies. Those are marauders. Literally, shall I say it? Literally lying in wait for you. Uh, bye. <laughs> Not interested. Okay. So no hostage scenario there. We're probably going to have to have a sleep at the ambush camp slash Nero MMU. Either one will do. Vagrant camp. Bastards have been ambushing all the supply runs around here, haven't you? to advance time to be able to hopefully spawn the final ob objective that will allow us to get level one trust at Wizard Island. But this is what I mean by one shot. So I was able to buy the suppressor, can't let him get and now I can life. put it on my SAF because the unique aspect of this location is that these guys, they set up their camp right next to a horde. It's not a huge horde, it's a mini horde. But in that tunnel, so while they're out playing tag or whatever, right at that tunnel, there's a horde. And we're gonna wake them up. Because conveniently, there's an explosive box. Just enough to make some noise. And here at this ambush camp, so as they're pouring out, you can see there are two slightly Let's do this. more armored there's one guy with a flamethrower who's about to be attacked and I'm just checking my inventory and then there's the uh, guy with the MG45 just to my left there back. How do you like that? there we go that's what we want we want that guy to engage and make a lot of noise Let's do this. Come on. Murdering son of a bitch. now it's not a huge horde and they're almost done. They're almost done clearing it out for me. But I want them to get away from the MMU trailer. 
because that's going to be, there we go. Okay, now that's, that's my cue to move. Because I have an attractor. Roads will be a little safer now. And I have a frag grenade from my looting session. And if you make your way up here. I wonder if they had a bunker around here. That light standard with the speaker and that truck, there is an explosive box right out of view that you can't see from this vantage point. But I'm just getting ready to get my attractor. I don't want them to spread out too much. So let's see if we can take them all out. That frag grenade will take out enough of them. But I'm going to use this pipe bomb. Am I gonna? No, no frag grenade. No. Come on, get them over there before the attractor runs out of juice. Well, that took most of them out. Let's see if I can... Get some more with that. Because they'll run right into the fire, dumbasses. Yeah, I don't need the suppressor now. Oh, I got, I got spotted. Just me poking my head up. Alright. I'm going to make a mad dash. I could probably take him out, but you know what? I'm a play it safe kind of guy. I don't like getting hit. I have adverse reactions to getting hit by freakers. <laughs> There's not a lot of them. I, I think this is... Yeah, this is not a good vantage point. They just, they just move too erratically. And I, I can't swing around fast enough while I'm pointing this thing to really take him down. How the hell with it? Let's go for it. There we go. There we go. Need that. I was worried for nothing. <laughs> Alrighty. Nice. And that speaker has been taken down by the explosion, so that's one less thing I gotta worry about. And just to show you a little bit of difference for this particular MMU is that it requires a fuse in order to actually engage all the electrical systems. Yeah, it's trying to point me to where the fuse is, but I need the bike first. I always go retrieve the bike before I do anything else. And just, again, prep it to make a quick getaway in case it's necessary. Yeah, that's going to be my quick exit point. Nah, he's outside the gate. Can't bother me. I'm just gonna fuel up. That was probably one of the best case scenarios when it comes to dealing with this ambush camp and uh, MMU location. That tiny horde did a wonderful job in taking out all the enemies for us. And now it's time to clear the fog of war and get this puppy opened up. There's a route back to... Uh, <laughs> Wizard Island, which I don't need anymore. Each ambush camp has its zone of influence. And we've already cleared out the top right of the Crater Lake region. What's this? A map? Notes? Yeah, 
Okay. And now this map, as we complete another level achievement for a skill point, and uh, almost there at Wizard Island, the MMU will get us closer once we open that up. And another craft recipe. Yay! How to put a saw blade through a bat. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, no. no. Craft recipes, unfortunately, are also not based on a particular location. But I'm going to get closer to that. Carry that weight. Yeah, I don't care about the survival vision. Being quieter. Sure, I think that's a that's a bonus. That'll be nice. But more importantly, we open up the next tier. And essentially, we are now three points away from getting carry that way. Which shouldn't be a problem based on the objectives that we are going to complete here. Now, still being daylight, I'm scooting out of the camp because I know that over here, not very far, is another Nero Injector. Yes! Which we saw on the map. Yeah, Nero Injector. Oh, I'm just worried about that freaker. Did he see me come in here? Because while you're doing all this, you are vulnerable yeah, that's the stuff. to them sneaking up on you and attacking you. But as long as you haven't injected yourself yet, they can take a swig at you and won't hurt you. Yeah, I just wanted to get that done. Get it out of the way because it's really close. Get ready to go in a hurry, and just in case, but not really too worried about it right now. It's time to take down these speakers. And you know what? <laughs> There's a locker. And instead of wasting ammunition, why not? I'm going to drop the MG45 that I picked up at the other ambush camp. But there's an MG45 at this ambush camp. So, so you're not really, not really losing much. Nope. I want to get out. Just... Sounds really determined. Oh, that was a swing and a miss on his... Yeah, love this thing. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot of ammo left. Yeah, but there's a tree over there, Deke. No worries. You're so worried all the time. I know, he's trying to tell us to keep in mind that there's not a lot of ammo left in case we're not keeping our eye on the score there. But there's at least two trees in here to get more saplings. That speaker was taken down by the explosion. And I prefer doing this rather than Walking over to the speaker and then going through the whole animation of him cutting it down. Ah, can't be bothered. <laughs> I have patience for a lot of stuff, but that I don't have patience for. And you don't need to. Why? Scarcity is not a thing to be worried about in this game. For the most part. I mean, I'm playing on an easier level just to have the mini-map up there. Show you what's going on and where things are. I'll let you do it.
But as far as resource management goes, it, you're not really in too much of a bind with a lot of things. Now this particular generator, there's also going to be an extra thing you got to do. Good. Because it's going to be... Busted. <laughs> broken. Oh, what do we do? We, go. we press a button to fix it. <laughs> This is a great game, don't get me wrong, but there are just some things like, really? All I gotta do is press a button and he fixes it? What, what was the point of that? Why not just have it work then? Like, if you had to go scavenge for something, that would have been interesting. Narrow injector, just what the doctor ordered. But just to push a button? All right. And there we go. That is the frustrating thing Ritz. about getting these is shit is? trust points is there's they give you enough to just tease you into thinking oh you got to do one more thing one more thing and i just want to show the mg45 because to acquire this weapon at this camp will be the easiest time you're going to have <laughs> as long as you've got the horde for the first time you're visiting this thing and you can take out that box to get the horde over here you, you won't have to lift a finger to take out this uh, group of marauders it literally is one shot it's a one shot kill location of course you have to deal with the horde if you want to but they usually go back to their sleeping area as long as you leave them be now taking out the horde is a good play unfortunately you have to wait until you get back to the cascades to turn in your bounties because the only merchants available at any of the camps especially lost lake and diamond lake is the mechanic that's it it's only at wizard island in fact that you have the extra merchant that you can purchase the weapons from. Everybody else? Nope. Nobody available. And you can't sleep at the camps either, which is why it's important to unlock the MMUs as soon as possible. All right. We're almost done looting everything here. Yeah, I, I just want to empty the magazines and get them fresh. Ooh, and a tractor. Oh, that, that's nice. That was a nice find. Rare. Rare. Now, I could pick up that MG45, but I have the one that I dumped inside the bunker. They will eventually despawn if you don't pick them up. But considering how close I am to being able to purchase weapons, the ones that I want from Wizard Island, I don't, I'm not going to worry about the MG45. Yeah, rah, 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 rah. they're all on the other side. I'm not worried about those guys. Sun's going down, though. And I'm hoping, more than likely, more than likely, once we go through the sleep cycle, be able to have the hostage scenario that I need spawn in as we head back to Wizard Island. Anything else? Box of nails. Don't care about box of nails. Jeez. In fact, I'm not really even going to worry about the melee weapon that I have currently. Because the Marauder location that we stopped at, that I was hoping would have the hostage situation, 
also has a very amazing item that we're totally going to pick up before we head back to Wizard Island. Regardless of whether there's a hostage scenario at that point or not, it's going to be a great location. Four o'clock at night. Yeah, time to, time to hit the hay. But it's, yeah, either one of those two locations. Cliffside or at that little encampment that we passed on the way here. One of those two locations will spawn. Hey, my bike got knocked over. Huh. Punks. Punks! All right. But yeah, couple those weapons with carry that weight and then moving on to the next phase of the mission to pimp out Deke's ride will make him tremendously overpowered by the time we get back to the Cascades. What's this? Yeah, I don't need to be stealthy anymore. In fact, that's the safest play because I can't store the MG45, but the crossbow will be in the locker. No matter which locker I visit, whether it's at an MMU locker or an ambush camp locker. <laughs> Time to pack it in and leave this popsicle stand behind. Let's go after our hostage. <laughs> All gassed up, we're good. Leave those freakers behind. Bye-bye. Okay, we've got the indicator on the map. That's potentially something of value there. We're on a patrol. Yeah, not worried about that guy. This is all potential. I'm just being cautious so that I don't get attacked from these guys at this camp. There's nobody there this time. Okay, let's go up there. I don't see anybody puttering around. Yeah, and Deke hasn't said anything. All right, I think this place is a bust, except for the one thing I really want you to take note of. Okay, didn't see me? Good. Oh, I'll get ya. I'm coming to get ya. Jeez. They're really oblivious, aren't they? Oh, well, that guy's having breakfast. Oh, it's no wonder there's... No marauders at this camp to hold a hostage because they're all dead. <laughs> a couple of supplies in case you're looking for some kerosene for your Molotovs. But this is the pièce de résistance. Right there, the superior metal axe at that encampment. The best melee weapon in the game. As far as stats go. <laughs> and not only that, also at this camp, in case, and I'm gonna, yeah, oblivious to the Lunchables. But as you can see to my left, you can also find the superior mace. Either one, which is really awesome. So if you've used up your superior mace, you can swap it out for another one. Or, like I did, pick up the best melee weapon in the game from that location. Again, it's like it's, it's seamless in, in like the objectives that you can accomplish and just find all these amazing items along the way. All right, one more chance. 
to see if our hostage scenario is going to spawn out. Now the criers are out and flying about. Can we make it past them? All right, awesome. Because if they start to dive bomb you while you're on the bike, you can't escape them, even with the nitrous. Well, nitrous one. There's the question mark on the mini-map. It's looking good. Oh, I can see a Marauder over there. <laughs> now, the only problem that has to be overcome is taking that particular Marauder out before he kills the hostage. Which is why I like this scenario better than trying to deal with a hostage situation over at the other encampment where there could possibly be many marauders and not being able to take them out before rescuing the hostage. Hey, how many drifters you guys murdered today, huh? Yeah, I can tell by looking at you. Oh, now he's turned his... Okay, got to take him out. No subtlety there. You're gonna be okay. You wanna die out here? Look, there's a camp. Uh, 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 camp? Yeah, where? Yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll yeah, go. look to your right, pal. Wizard Island, my friends. 500 trust. Okay, uh, look, head to Crater Lake. There's and that puts us over the top. Island. You gotta find Colonel Garrett. Uh, thank you. What? Uh, Speak up. <laughs> tell them it was Deacon. They'll know. Stay off the main roads. Don't stop. Sweet, sweet joy on that accomplishment. That is mission one complete, as far as I'm concerned. Now it's just a matter of making our way down there. And swapping out these now I don't care about the MG45 or the SAF on my back I'm rubbing my hands as I'm driving <laughs> because we all know what awaits us and it's a hell of a loadout to be able to come to this location through that amazing little just climbing a few rocks and scooting, boogieing across the landscape to get to this location and then dealing with all those objectives that are so close. Like as soon as you get in, it's like just at that MMU, at the Volcanic Byway MMU. You got the two infestation zones, an ambush camp, open up the MMU, you're more than halfway there. And then we just scoot on over to this side of the map you get a hostage situation to take care of and literally the easiest ambush camp MMU combo location that you'll ever come across to deal with because a horde will deal with it for you. And just like that, we're going to be walking out of here with a hell of an arsenal. And not only that, look at the amount of credits we have at Wizard Island. Now, even though, how's life? It's going to get a ton better right now. How's an East Coast City boy doing all the way the hell out here? Actually, yes. I love this gun, by the way. And there's our horde killer. No shit, right? Awesome. Let me tell you, man. And not only that, now we have access to all three suppressor types from this camp. That's where I've seen you. Crazy. You had a cable show. My old man used to watch it back in the day. Hey, your old man had good taste. Goddamn right I did. I used to travel the country hitting up out of the way gun shows, flea markets, shit like that. I guess All right. this is about as now we can look at our locker gets. and see because they are purchased weapons that, huh? they will be available at every locker that we have access to 
either at a camp, ambush camp that we've cleared, uh -huh. or MMU. So bye-bye to the MG45, bye-bye to the SAF. I see it, Corporal. Hey, you sleep with that gun, am I right? And we still have all these credits and this trust will be there when we re-enter the region later on in the game, like during normal gameplay. This will already have been done. This will be accomplished. There won't be anything for you to do other than main missions. Now we just have to go to Diamond Lake, which is still shrouded in the fog of war. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> That's silly. But there's also a couple of injectors up there too. Yeah, we're going to get there. Don't worry, we're going to get there. But now phase two of the mission is to get over to this side of things and start clearing out objectives to be able to get level two trust, level two trust at Diamond Lake. Wizard Island is maxed out at level one at this point in the game because there's no missions, there's no side missions. There's no nothing. So we've, we've everything that uh, we could do to get level one at Wizard Island has been accomplished. So now it's all about upgrading the bike. It's still early enough in the day where I'm going to head over to Diamond Lake, actually, to demonstrate what's awaiting for us there in terms of how we can upgrade the bike and also to pick up the... I, Okay, get back on the bike, Deke. <laughs> Sorry, I, I pressed getting off it as opposed to the accelerator. I don't know what the hell happened there. But there are a couple of injectors over there. And I also want to make sure I visit Diamond Lake because it will be important as the final objective will be a hostage scenario that happens really close by to where I'm riding, actually. And in order to send the hostage to Diamond Lake, we need to visit it. Might as well do that right now. So, incredibly close to Wizard Island. And actually, near Diamond Lake are two locations to pick up the superior metal axe. So as you can see, we've got the mechanic here. And because we cleared out that ambush camp, it gave us some ex experience. And tr we're, we're, we're halfway to trust at level one already. Seen you around. So we have cash here, but I'm going to save it. Yeah, uh, I just shipped in, you know. Uh, Deacon St. John. So you can oh, see, uh, take a look around. I, I at level I two, all kinds we can get problems. engine if, three, if which credits. is... <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And then the water damage reduction and whatnot. So we won't be able to get to level three. But what's awesome is if we just acquire a little bit more cash we can actually get the largest capacity gas tank in the game right now. We just need to get more cash. Which we'll get to. It's coming. And then level one frame. Level one suspension. Nitrous we can't do anything about. Level one tires. Okay, when you're ready. And level one radiator. So there is plenty to be able to soup up. The only thing that really requires level two is the engine. And that's 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 pretty much what we're gonna what we're really worried about getting level two for is just 
the engine so we're not put putting around. But once we get level one, we get all the other all the other upgrades. So I'm not gonna bother refueling here. Because there's a a gas can location and an injector location nearby. So that's where we're heading off to. And again, it's not that far from camp. We just ride along this road until we come to this grove of trees. And then up we go, up the mountain. Until we get here. <laughs> Slide. First order of business will be an injector. And if you uh, decide to listen to pick up the recorders, you'll get some insights on enemies and a lot of the lore of the game as well. So feel free to do that during your playthrough. Ooh. Ooh. That'll do it. That'll do it. Just one more to max out the stamina, and that's uh, near another near another horde, which thankfully we do not have to take out right away. We probably have the weapons and the items to do so, but it's not necessary. So now that we've got that injector, I'll just quickly show you the location of the superior metal axe. Which is at this campsite right here. Right there. So if you find yourself in this part of the map before the other part, not far from Diamond Lake, is a superior metal axe. And in fact, this burnt out building right there, right next to Diamond Lake, is another superior metal axe. So your uh, dealer's choice on that one. But now I'm going to... Get some fuel, which is located inside that building right there. <laughs> and there's some kerosene there. And there's also an ammo tin in here. So again, you know, if you find yourself not near a camp and you really need to load up by all means now you can't carry the gas can out so you got to throw it out all right let's get down to business all right once we get this puppy all gassed up I'm going to go for that final injector to give me the maxed out stamina. That should be it. It's not that far. And technically I'm going to be arriving at an active horde zone because the Mount Bailey horde will be very near the location of the injector. I technically have to sneak by the horde in order to get the injector. Now the bike is still really loud, so it's time to just make a very stealthy approach. Not to get ambushed. Yeah, you can hear them. And they are 300 strong. It's totally doable with just guns. 
but I would definitely want extended mags and have the bike close by with saddlebags that can at least refill the ammo twice. And that does it for the stamina. Nothing around here to worry about taking. Now, it's also, as the sun starts setting, it is also time where they might come out to feed or to drink, so <laughs> I do not want to be around when that happens. Just so you know where it is, that's where we picked it up and leaving. And it's early enough in the day. I know the sun goes down pretty fast around these parts, but it should be safe enough to travel to be able to get back to the ambush camp and deal with all the objectives now that will help us increase our Diamond Lake Trust to be able to pimp out Deke's bike. Oh. See Daisy, this is a little bit of a drop. Ouch. Okay. Oh, what's going on there? The weather's starting to turn nasty. Yeah. As usual. I'm gonna try and take the shortest route possible. I think our gas will hold out all the way. We can always stop off at the Volcanic Byway MMU to gas up. Gas is usually not the problem. Actually, I'm just gonna... I wanna make a quick pit stop over here. Oh no, I went too far. Okay, never mind. Never mind, the sun's going down. Let's just get out of here. But I do want berries. Berries are good. That's what that symbol is because berries are the only things that in this particular case will help me craft stamina cocktails. Yeah, I don't need the health one. Nice to have these weapons though, gotta tell ya. Now I'm gonna go down because there's some possible snipers there. And if we look left, what I'm passing by is the actual location where the hostage rescue mission, well, it's not a mission, but the hostage rescue objective will be when it spawns in order to finish the entire purpose of this video to be able to get level two trust at Diamond Lake. Right there, back there. Of course, before we do all that, we just gotta head back to the Highway 97 region and finish off all our objectives there first. And I can't wait to get that engine. Holy jeez. I'm flooring it. If you can believe it, I'm flooring this bike. Ugh. All right. Yeah, I don't think we'll need the gas. We'll make it through the tunnel. 
All good. That wasn't good. <laughs> and we don't want to be around here at night with that horde either, so. As long as you're not flooring it, you can still make a reasonable ride. A lot of red. I'm seeing a lot of red. Okay, it's not not anywhere near us. Now that Z simple. Very important. We need to get our Z's. Uh, now we could gas up. Gas up and get it ready to go out. That should be it. All right, let's just take a look. We're going to need to take out five infestation zones right there, first off, tomorrow morning. And, yep. Okay, we're good to go. I have enough. Skipping on ahead through the sleep cycle, we're now fully engaged with phase two of my pursuit to get the bike pimped out with all the upgrades from Diamond Lake. I'm already lost. <laughs> uh, left. Okay. <laughs> right. Right, 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 right. Okay, so I want to avoid those crier nests. And since we're pretty maxed out on stamina... I want to get the bike in a ready position. Okay. Yeah, because we got crow's nests over there. Crier's nest, sorry. We got the crier's nests we got to worry about because they will dive bomb us. And it looks like. Oh, it looks like we glitched out on some of the textures. <laughs> well, that's funky. When you hear the crier make that noise, you're about to be dive bombed. A quick dive roll away from the direction of attack uh, will usually avoid any damage. Okay, hold up. Oh, son of a bitch. Snuck up on me. Where's the bike? He's pissing me off, so he goes down. Now that made a little bit of a ruckus. And that's why we have nitrous. Could you possibly try not to hit every single one 
<laughs> yeah, I had to throw that in there because my writing there was just awful. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I gotta reload. Oh, God. That was funny. All right, I just saw some marauders down there. But I gotta take care of this and load up on the Molotovs. And I wonder, you think I can leave them over there? Let's see how this turns out. Come on, boys. Follow the leader. Yeah, they're following. Bruh. <laughs> Take your eyes off the prize for one second. All right. <laughs> I avoided those guys. Uh, yeah, awesome. Oh, I love the sound of gunfire in the morning. Nice distraction too, perfect. Ugh, perfect, I love it, love it. Keep shooting. Well, if the Freakers are going to be around, we might as well put them to work. Very nice. So by the time we take care of the Horde and the MMU, we should get level one at Diamond Lake. That looks like that freak is glitched out. And it looks like the Marauders are done. All right. Well, like I said, my job here is done. Now it's time to head south. Follow the rail line and then head left and then down and across and over and everywhere. All right. Now, oh, while I'm here, I'll just. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. Since I love running into trees, apparently. Let's take a look if there's anything in this camp since we just used up some Molotovs. Yeah, kerosene, take that. I see kerosene over there. What else? Ugh. What a horrible scene. Yeah, rags. Who knew? I think that's it. Not much. Wasn't expecting much, but it picked up something. Oh, there's fuel too. Oh, and a bottle. Yep. All the makings for a Molotov. At least made one up. And you can see, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take much. That should be it. And we'll just patch myself up. Okay. Now the good thing is, as I mentioned before, the 
teleport in that cave does not exist. So we can drive right on by. going on there but not my concern my concern is right here because that's what I'm looking at so here we are and even though the whole thing is walled off so you can see there are six nests so in this area just just here by itself We've got a ton of stuff we can take care of. We can take care of the MMU. We can take care of the Horde. We can take care of all these infestation zones, which is six belonging to the one zone. And then we've got another small Horde we can take care of over there. And then as we travel further south, we'll need to take care of a Horde, Ambush Camp, and MMU. But for right now, Priority is to get in there, and in order to do that, we just deke's legs of steel, power our way up a rock, up and over, and we're good. I'm just going to scoot down onto this rock outcropping as a fallback position once the horde starts to chase me again, and just going to hop down and yep hit the square button to ride and I can just zip right up there we are at Shemult College now ready to take on the horde <laughs> All right, now let's craft some get that ready at the ready men No, we're not running away. But I am going to use the power of my will to tell this horde where to go. <laughs> In case you're wondering how that's being accomplished, it's really just where I'm standing on the rock that's determining whether they congregate in one area or start moving off to the other area. Very handy to be able to deal, especially with the horde at this size. I want to keep them moving so they don't really have a chance to congregate. Whoopsie! <laughs> Well, that's another reason why we have the bike where it is. Be able to do that. And while they're running around, we get back into a more suitable location. Yeah, this won't take much longer. This is good. This is great. Oh, working out a hell of a lot better than I thought. Whoa! Okay, I, I hate when that happens sometimes. Press the wrong combination and actually swap my button for the thing. Oh, look at that! Mosh pit! There we go. <laughs> that freaker was flying! Ah! 
I'm not really too worried about the conservation of ammo because the MMU, once we open that up, I'll be able to resupply and rearm all these weapons to maximum. There you go. And we get another skill point, but more importantly, achieving level one at Diamond Lake. That's awesome. <laughs> I love the sound of that gun. What can I tell you? There we go. Trust level one confirmed at Diamond Lake. Perfect. I could head over there and grab the gas tank, but it's a hell of a trek. And you know what? Like Deke says, I'm already over here and we don't have that many tasks left to complete. Whoa, what is going on with you? Woo. Oh, God damn it. Fuse blown. Another MMU that requires a fuse? No worries. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm loving this gun. It's just, it's so choice. I don't want to bother getting up there. Any freakers that uh, get attracted by the sound, I think I can take care of. That's why I'm not too worried about uh, making some noise. Oh, that one fell down because of the explosion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I threw a pipe bomb there, that's right. <laughs> Great echo. Did I mention I love the sound of this gun? I'll take that. Okay. Get the Molotovs ready. I'll need one more, but I'll find I'll find enough crafting supplies for that. Because there are three infestation nests no in this zone. Wrong direction. Yeah, don't worry about the direction there, Deke. I'm going to get the uh, fuse after, but there we go. Because the fuse is nearby. What is that? No, yeah, that's just a stupid thing. I never use... I Yeah, once you have this battle axe on your back... I'm a little closer. I'll put the suppressor on for that. Easy enough to get back to Wizard Island and resupply on the suppressors, that's for sure. All right, here's the fuse. <laughs> fuse, yes. And let me just show you where in the world it is. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? That tent right there. No need to be searching on the ground, looking for clues. Now you know. Okay. I thought there was kerosene in one of these tents. Oh, there's a rag. And I think in here? Ooh, spin myself around, but yeah, there we go. That first tent right there. That will give us the ability to take out the three infestation zones up on this part of the college site out of the total of six, because there's three that are down on Highway 97 that are part of this infestation zone. They count, but they're down on Highway 97. And there are the three up there we gotta take care of first. I probably should have opened up the MMU first to rearm, but <laughs> let's add a little excitement to this adventure, shall we? Besides, I've got stamina up the wazoo now. I can outrun all these guys. Yeah. There's another nest. All right. I got a, quite a few of them chasing me. They're pretty persistent. 
got enough left in this puppy to take care of this. <laughs> yeah, pray and spray. That that's pretty much my philosophy. Seriously, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't care now. The hell with y'all. <laughs> Just die. <laughs> die already. Accuracy is not the mantra of this video, nor is marksmanship. So don't tune in if you're learning how to use these weapons properly. <laughs> it's just, that's not why you're here. All right, I think that's all taken care of. Somebody over here? No, I'm just gonna pick up. What, what the, a rag, woo. I actually got a headshot out of that. All right. Just got to take care of two more speakers before we uh, head back to the MMU. And now that there's no uh, freakers of any significant size to bother me, just going to go loud. Hello. Oh, look at that. A little closer. Thank you. Ah, just the two. Just the two strikes with uh, this weapon. That's really awesome. I'm just grounding now. Yeah, I took that down already. Box of nails. Never use them. <laughs> Phew. Yes. Every time I pass a box of nails, it just it just grates on me that that's actually a recipe to craft. Really? Bat nails? Could figure that out. I know, it was hours ago. I'm lingering on it. I don't understand why. Yeah, now we're in business. Take care of that. I'll let you do it. It should. Gotta gas it up first, though. Hello? No? <laughs> I'm pressing the circle button on the controller and it just does not want to initiate the fueling process. There we go. That was so weird. Good. He's just like bowing to it like pray that this works. Green lights, green lights are good. Green lights are always good. There really better be something. Yes. Neuro injector. Of course there's something in there, Deke. Come on. Every Nero trailer you visit, there's always something. Of course, now we've filled up on the stamina. Health is the next thing to do. Well, Creeping our way up to level two trust at Diamond Lake. Getting up there. And time to restock on our weapons. Fill the ammo, please. I mean, we have so much credits at Wizard Island that I don't think I could possibly run out at this point to do the objectives that I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run out of cash to be able to rearm these weapons. Now, what's really odd is that when you are at a locker and you're reloading all your ammo, you have to empty your magazine first. Even though you fill it, you have to empty the magazine and then go back to the locker and rearm it. It's a little quirk, unique to the locker situation, 
Whereas you don't have that problem if you're doing it from the camp. Now it's getting a little late in the day because the next objectives are to deal with those particular nests on the highway and the Groose Gardens hoard in that house. It'll take time and I'm not really confident that I can accomplish that before the sun goes down. I will need Molotovs to take care of the nests themselves, but I don't have to worry about that at this moment. And what I want to do also, by crafting that smoke bomb, will help me with the horde. Yeah, the uh, Molotovs I can get after I deal with the horde. I can get actually a few Molotovs crafted before I deal with the horde but I don't need the Molotovs to take care of the Horde themselves. I got some time, and I know I can find a couple of things up here. Might as well. I know I'm not going to be attacking the Hordes over there, so I'm just going to look for some supplies up here. I think I can find another another rags and some kerosene. I know there's some up here. Yeah, there's a, there's that. I think there's some kerosene on the other side. Yeah. Little by little. Once I get carry that weight though, oh my goodness, what a game changer that's gonna to be too. Ah, you box of nails, Arr! <laughs> I don't need nails. I don't need the box of nails. <laughs> yes, it's a sticking point, all right? <laughs> I just, I don't know why, it irks me. It irks me that like out of out of all the crafting recipes you could get early game, which I understand because the the resources just aren't there in the cascades to really craft anything other than a simplistic weapon that adds to the bat. You know, I mean, because you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> you're not supposed to be here at Wizard Island or Highway 97 or Lost Lake or any of that. Normal gameplay. The nails can help if you're just all you have is a bat. I just can't play that way anymore. Not after finding the method and the path to get out here. I mean, after doing this, every every playthrough is gonna start with this. Like I don't care whether whether it's Survivor 2, Hard 1, Easy. I'm just always going to do this first. Only takes a couple hours. Which is kind of funny. Because when I recall saying at the beginning that I didn't want to take the focus cocktail because I didn't want Deke to have a superpower. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's going to play the rest of the game with a bike with like unli almost unlimited fuel tank. Like the tank is so huge that I'll barely have to fuel up. The engine I'll be able to outrace anything except for runners. I've got a horde killing weapon. So pretty much Deke is super powered at this point. And even if I just went back to get the gas tank, that'd be enough, but yeah. <laughs> I don't want Deke to have a superpower, but I want him to be overpowered. <laughs> Yeah, now, now we're set. Okay, we're set now. And this time the sun really is setting on the day. Might as well just get back. 
hit the hay and get on to tomorrow's objectives. Which are actually, again, nice and neat when you think about how efficient you can make this particular run through. Because you get here, you take out the horde, you take out the MMU, you take out some infestation nests up here, then you go down to the highway, take care of those things. So we're gonna skip ahead. Bada bing, bada boom, there we go. Night has turned to day. Time to take care of... Oh, the other way. <laughs> I normally park the bike over there next to the, next to the Jenny. That's why I was heading that way. And again, it's so close. Everything, everything that needs to be accomplished is surprisingly close to each other. Now, if you need ammo, if you're still carrying the MG45, yeah, over there, to raid those cop cars. It's like they were put here specifically for the mission of taking out the horde, <laughs> which is great, which is right there. They, they're in that house. And I'm going to use the brown house here to perform the operation. Again, random events could potentially screw up all these plans. Because if you've got wildlife or marauders that start shooting at you, well, the horde is just going to come out and investigate what's going on. Got lucky and... Being on normal, I think, is also another indicator of just how much you can uh, get away with by not playing on a harder difficulty. Especially if you want to try a new game plus, if you want to get the game done and finished. And by the way, we're just going to hop on and cross over the fence to get to the roof line. And now we're just going to take him out. And this is why I crafted the smoke bomb. Just want to keep them there without without using an attractor. Because they'll kind of bunch up. So for the relatively small cost of a, of a smoke bomb, you can, you can take care of quite a few of them. I took care of it with one magazine. Now you just stand on the corner of the house. Just a little ways away because we don't want, yeah, we don't want those guys going into the house. Otherwise, I still think they're going in the house anyway, but they're just coming around. Doing the Congo line. Round and round we go. I'm almost. Feeling sorry for you guys. <laughs> Which was another reason why I wanted to head back to Wizard Island first to get these weapons. Despite the gameplays where you see everybody throwing Molotovs and Napalms and they have a ton of resources, I don't have a lot of resources at this point in the game. And whatever I managed to scavenge off the corpses really didn't amount to too much. I want to save those resources for the even bigger horde that we're going to have to take care of. Which is coming up later down the line. Now at some point too, there's too many bodies to, to get to the last few freakers here. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. But I won't be able to shoot through these guys. Not many left. But that's why I'm just gonna go over. 
That's why I left the gas can there too. Got it. Just gotta wait for a few more of them to show up. And <laughs> there we go. Nice. <laughs> I didn't have to jump down and take care of them. 5% Horde Killer storyline, by the way, so keep note of that. Because anybody familiar with the storylines regarding the Hordes, once you reach 10%, or essentially have killed four Hordes, you get a nice little bonus weapon that you don't have to worry about purchasing. We're leading up to that. Definitely leading up to that. Scrap. Good. And what's really great is because of the weapons in the loadout that I have currently, it's enough to take care of these hordes. Even though we're in a region where the numbers are staggeringly large compared to even the Cascades. Cascades and the horde numbers are really small. With these weapons, you can go back to the Cascades and take out four hordes, no problem. Yeah, I didn't have any bullets to change out the magazines, but now I now I'm able to do that there. So with the horde eliminated and enough resources to craft the Molotovs I need. In case I botch one, I have some more. But three nests, three Molotovs. There's one there under the bridge and two more under the bridge where the cop cars are. And instead of heading back to the college, MMU, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna raid these. Why not? They're here. One more ought to do it. Yeah, I'm pretty much maxed out now. Okay, let's take care of these nests. Pretty quiet. Uh, no. <laughs> what? Ghost Molotov. <laughs> That's five out of six. One more to go. No, I'm not going to ride to the Nero checkpoint. Boozer can wait. I'm not saying it's his fault that he got burned, but I'm busy here. Huh. Well, again, relatively easier time on normal regarding being pursued by freakers after wiping out their nests, but there we go, another skill point. And inching closer and closer to getting level two at Diamond Lake. Let's take a look. Oh, we got two skill points. Okay. You only need the two to unlock the next tier, so stamina related is always good for me. And yeah, the butcher. 
which is interesting because it's not quite double the amount of meat. You can actually get four to five times the amount of meat with that skill. And we're just that much closer to carry that weight. Now we've got these three objectives coming up. And even though Bear Bay is closer, because of the time of day, I really just want to head over to the Paulette Bridge Nero checkpoint and open that puppy up, just in case. We may have time to open it up and then come back and take on the ambush camp, but I'll make that determination once I get the MMU up and running because it's just easier to get that up and running than taking on an ambush camp. Now I just want to pull up down here and see if there are some crafting items that uh, might be available. Oh yeah, where there's fishing, there's bottles. Encampments are always a good thing. There's normally where a hostage scenario can spawn in at that camp over there, that encampment. Depending on the spawn, you can get as many as three, and I think even four hostages at that location. But not today. Not today, people. That's all right. Sometimes they spawn in just as you get closer, but I don't see nothing. Not happening. No, all right. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, you normally see the question mark by now. Time to get to the MMU, because we are far from the college at this point. And I'm just being a little cautious around here, because marauders tend to spawn at that gas station, usually with a sniper. But again... Oh, squatters. Oh. God damn it. They were waiting for me. They were waiting for you. I just didn't see them. Okay. No worries. Priority is the MMU. Because the day just goes by so fast. <laughs> Whoops. God damn it, you sons of bitches. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, I, I saw a body lying down. I remember the whole... Dude, really? You just you just saw your friend get blown away. <laughs> uh, did I did I rouse the horde? No. Okay. Yeah, I saw the bodies on the ground as I was riding over them, and they were again laying in wait. <laughs> they just don't learn. I mean, the machete was a nice touch but uh, still not going to be 100% effective against a weapon like the little stubby. Especially when you're running right at me. Like, come and get it! Okay, here we go. Now I don't... <laughs> I, think, I think that freaker got swatted by his own guy! <laughs> Yeah, I really don't want the horde to come down on me. I think I'm far enough away, though, from here. Uh, she's glitching out. Take care of her. Quiet. All quiet like.
Coming down? Whee! <laughs> Yeah, this one I'm going to... I'm going to do the old-fashioned way. It's nice and quiet-like. Which means i got to run all the way around. No, I'm not saying it this time. Box of nails, sir! Two more speakers to take care of off this uh, trailer. But then I gotta go get gas. And then come back around. Just want to get the bike in a go position. It will make such a huge difference when I don't have to gas up as often, that's for sure. Anybody got anything interesting here? Can't get out of my way, thank you. Well, oh, Molotov, I'll take that. Pull frag grenade, oh, that's nice. When I take on the horde, that'll be a sweet little addition to help wipe them out with, that's for sure. Run! You got stamina? Use it! Good. So, opening up this MMU will give us more trust. Oh, yes. And get us closer to level two. Here we go. Yes, Nero injector. <laughs> Just about halfway there. only two o'clock in the afternoon, barely. And now with this thing opened up, worse comes to worse, I can always run back here, well, ride back here and make a save game from here. Not quite ready to deal with the horde just yet. Therefore, I'm going to head back over to deal with an ambush camp. Because we're in the middle of the day, and maybe I might be able to get lucky at the ambush camp and pick up a few more things off the marauders. Following the line that I'm taking, the ambush camp is in the water section of this part of the map. They do have a sniper, which is the reason I'm approaching so cautiously. And just want to make sure I'm out of the line camp. of sight. These are the assholes who've been ambushing the roads around here. And I think I'll be okay if I park the bike up next to this rock. Uh, 
and it's time to sneak in. I've got good cover right up until I get to the sniper's position, I think. Yeah. So you can see in the bottom left corner, just next to the mini-map, that anytime the eye has the X through it, you are completely invisible. I've got to kill them all. Every last one of these murdering sons and bitches. I don't have a good shot at them. It's not the great spot. And he spotted me. <laughs> All right. So much for stealth. Oh, he's behind me. Oof. That was close. That was close. There we go. Of course, I don't know why I have the suppressor on, but... Someone's here. Because that sniper shot, pretty much, yeah. Let's let's uh, not necessarily use that weapon. Just take take the thing off, Deke. Oh, that's a that's a heavy. I don't know why I have the suppressor on. I left it on by accident. Just one shot. Come on. Shot to the head. Beautiful. That particular Marauder and then the one with the flamethrower are the most uh, lethal ones I'm concerned about. Everybody else is just, meh, whatever. Meh. <laughs> and I can't see because I got out of sight, so... Here she comes. <laughs> I love yeah, getting shot is not fun, is it? <laughs> I don't need the suppressor anymore. Come on. Poke your head out, you bum. Not gonna. Oops, I... Okay. There we go. Sons of bitches. Hey, like what do you say, huh? Yeah. You don't want to die out there. We don't want to waste the bullets. Take it easy on yourself. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm having fun. It's like, hey, you don't want to waste the bullets? No problem. I don't mind wasting mine. a little bit more to the right. I know there's a bunch down there. No, I'm not going to bother going. I just want to... Can I see them? Where are they? There they are. All bunched up over there. You're in here. Let's see, can we get the one way in the back? Oh, I heard something I heard something on the right. I don't want to get flanked. Yeah, he's on the other side of the fence, though. Can't get to me. <laughs> Tactical retreat time. There's still quite a few of them. Holy <laughs> 
Surprise! <laughs> The good thing about playing on this difficulty level two is the uh, drain on your health is uh, not as severe as when you are playing on a harder difficulty. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I'm gonna keep on running around. I think that missed. Oh well, no big deal. Yeah, you guys come all over to my section of the of the camp. That way I don't have to keep chasing you down. Hide, you son of a bitch. Ah, the rock got in the way. We don't mean you no harm, Drifter. Uh-huh. Can't be too many left at this point. There's the flamethrower guy. If I hit him in the back, there we go. <laughs> if you can hit the gas tank on the back of him, it'll just explode. Boy, that's a lot of X's right there. Yeah, this is going to take me into the night. Yeah, I'm not fast. I'm not fast. Oh, there's some supplies right there. I'll take care of a few things. I'm also crafting not necessarily to use, but just in case I happen to run across some supplies as I'm traveling, then I can pick them up and stash them away in the satchel. I do want to do stealth on this one. There we go. I think they're a little far away for me to be able to reach them. What? I just patch myself up before I. Something's here. God damn it! There we go. Body shot down. Needless to say, the spread on that gun is not ideal for precision shooting. But then I'm not ideal for precision shooting either. <laughs> Where are you going? Okay. Well. <laughs> Close up. Oh, what? hey, he disappeared. What? That's weird. I know there were two of them because I saw another red symbol there. Oh, there's 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 a guy. He's got a helmet, so I don't want to give him a chance to come at me. Hello. Here, here. 
Oh, there he is. Okay. And there he goes. I got him. Uh, am I seeing things? I thought he was right there. Well, if he's like the Predator and can turn on some shielding where he turns invisible, this is going to be a long and drawn out venture. It says he's right there, but I don't see nothing. I'm right on top of him. Where the hell is he? Am I blind? <laughs> I think it's another glitch situation. That's weird. Okay. I see him. Ah, okay, he was on the other side. Ah, you sneaky. You sneaky bastard. That's why he was just hiding on the other side of it. Yeah, you're not getting away that easily, pal. You're going down. That's it. You're done. Going down. Like that, huh? Being ambushed, you like that? Damn murdering sons of bitches. All right, let's see if they got an underground bunker around here. I'm sure they do, Deke. I'm sure they do. Nothing in here I can use. <laughs> Assuming I can get out. There we go. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Should be able to lift the fog of war momentarily. At the end, I believe. All right, let's take a look. That's all the places we've traveled and we've cleared the fog of war, but Looks like they marked it up good. marking this map will now clear out some more and we're oh so close to getting that next skill point and getting ever closer to level two at Diamond Lake. All right, Got some papers, not some time to head out graphic. and loot these guys mm -hmm. and switch it over to daytime. <laughs> Good. I picked up a pipe bomb and two frag grenades off the marauders that were in the camp, which now will make the objective of taking out the horde just a little bit easier. Because the Lobert Drawridge horde is 300 strong. Should be able to take it out now with the resources that I have in hand along with the ammo and the guns. And what I'm off to now is to pick up another injector, which is just under that bridge right there. I just got to make sure I'm sticking far enough away from the crier nests. Don't get attacked. But yeah, just a little hop, skip, and roll down. I didn't roll, but you can. What's under another Nero injector? Good. Good. Yes, it's good, Dick. More health. Mm. 
It's always a good thing to increase the health, especially with the swipes or gunshots. I'm going to take a wide berth here and avoid those cryer nests as much as possible. While you're on the bike, you are completely vulnerable to a cryer attack. There's just nothing you can do. They dive bomb so fast that I think even if you tried to shoot them out of the sky, it wouldn't uh, wouldn't do too much. And there's no marauders with a sniper over there that I could see. Now it's horde smashing time. And being the daytime, they should be slumbering in the cave. And I'm going to ride into a easier kill location <laughs> with uh, with uh, 300 freakers. It's it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, he's coming after me, but I'm going to be able to get on here. So just behind this fence, they're somewhat protected. I'm just feeling, though, that uh, even uh, this rock area will still leave me slightly vulnerable just because of the numbers involved. But it's still a good vantage point to start the attack. I don't think I'll finish it here because once the bodies start piling up, it'll, it'll get more difficult. Yeah, there. So I got the pipe bomb, and I got two more frag grenades to give me a total of three. And I'm going to use smoke bombs. They are very effective at luring the hordes out without having to use an attractor. And I just need them to get out so that they can hear the gunfire. Like that. There we go. And now they know where I am. Yeah, I'm just going to get my attractor ready and keep him over there for a bit. While I take care of these guys. <laughs> Jeez, that's a lot. <laughs> Can I use a bomb? I use something simple because there is a... Yeah, this is where it's going to get... <laughs> A little gnarly. It's gonna get gnarly. I mean, the fence is providing very good cover, but like I said, when the bodies start piling up, they they get bounced up to my location, like right there. Oh no! It's wildly swinging and not hitting me. <laughs> I don't know what kind of karate moves he was trying to perform there, but ineffective, ineffective. It's a nice uh, parade of freakers coming right at me. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is where it's going to be a little problematic because that that's actually quite a long barrel gun, and uh, just being this close to the fence makes it difficult to actually aim at the fence. I'm gonna have to back up a little bit on the rock and I'm already pretty close onto a ledge. Oh, I just, looks like I hit a gas container. Yeah, the long barrel, I can't shoot through the fence. There we go. <laughs> I'm 
Yeah, they're all behind the fence now. I do not want to use explosives this close. <laughs> Molotov I can probably deal with. You know, I catch fire, I can get out of there. Oh, I'll take it. That took out a decent amount. Let's just get a craft in and... Whoops. Oh, that dive roll was a little too much. I wanted to get closer, but... Okay. <laughs> this is the reason why I like stamina. <laughs> it's just me, folks. I'm sure you'll have a much easier and better time at this than me. <laughs> As I mentioned, it's a fairly sizable horde at 300, and having those grenades will eventually help. Ouch! Oh, get out of my way! <laughs> and there's the skill point. Nice! Remember, taking Freakers out adds up to experience points. And that's why this particular horde with 300 of them provides ample opportunity to pick up experience points to get those skill points too. All right. <laughs> Time to head back and Put more ammo in the guns. You can see there's still a fairly sizable chunk of them left over. There's only one other horde in the game that's actually larger than this horde. And that's the horde at the sawmill at 500. Another great reason to get the MMU up and running and have these weapons bought from Wizard Island because, like I said, I just have to come back in here. Load up on ammo. And head back out. It's completely doable with guns only. Especially with this setup. And if you've taken some stamina, or you're more of a focus person, you can definitely even with the supplies on hand, but with these weapons and the ability to rearm, again, so close yeah, to the objective, is. why not take the opportunity to take out the horde? You'll have an ample supply of Freaker Ears to take back to the Cascades with you and either use at Copeland's, which I really wouldn't. Copeland's doesn't have too much. Especially if you're a weapons person, you want to save it for hot springs. That's where decent cache of weapons are early in the game. And the faster you can accumulate trust and get the levels up to one, two, and three, especially over there, that's probably what I would align my purpose of getting free careers over here and handing them over there. All right. So just moving up now for the second wave of the assault from another safe location. I'm just gonna now use the grenades and uh, take them down a little bit. Oh, that, <laughs> wow, five. <laughs> There we go. That's a little better. Now you want to be standing on a particular spot on this ledge. Otherwise, they're going to run up the hill and uh, drop down on you from above. And uh, I'm not interested in having creepers rain down on my head to my location. Therefore, I'm going to stick it out right here. And, uh, yeah, Molotovs are really excellent in this case. 
I could use the grenade, but I'd be worried about blowing myself up. <laughs> and I'm not interested in doing that either. There, that's the, uh, so as you're backing up, just a little higher, then you can force the horde to start running up the hill. Again, to thin out their ranks a little bit, and once the bodies start piling up, then it gets a little bit more difficult to actually hit them. Not only that, once I get them down to a reasonably small number, where I feel I can handle them better, I'm gonna move my position and uh, get them to run away. Yeah, that's... Yeah, time to get them out of there so that I can hop down and take out the rest of them. There we go. Nice. Yeah, not, not many left at all. I can take care of this. This is easy. Bye-bye. And done. A nice tally of 300 Freaker Ears to add to the inventory. I'm never going to use this again anyway. Because I have the ability to run up to the Palette Bridge Nero MMU and resupply there, but while that cop car is there and it's free ammo, might as well. Those were three big objectives for Diamond Lake Trust taken care of right there with the ambush camp, this MMU, and the horde. I'm just going to head up and rearm. Okay, one o'clock. We're in very good shape. Yep, time to rearm. Time for magazine check. That's full, that's full, and that is full. And we bow. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> All right. I don't think there's tons to scavenge around here. I'll just do a quick pass, see what's available. Used a couple of Molotovs, so that'll help. Ooh, bandage. Ugh, I'm not that hurt. Yeah, unfortunately, those two grenades, the first grenade did nothing. Oh my, that was a waste. <laughs> what a waste of a grenade. I should have waited until they came out a little bit more. And I didn't think of using uh, the uh, smoke bomb. I could have used a smoke bomb there. Hold them up a bit, kind of get them all uh, bunched up. Ah, that's what happens in the heat of battle. Not always thinking clearly. But always a lesson to be learned.
once I get back to the Cascades and do the whole game and be able to reset the hordes, that probably will be a strategy I might use in a future video. And if you end up taking on that horde and use some of the strategies or find a new way of dealing with them, I'd love to see your video on that. Or even if you want to, post a comment and hit me up with an idea of what you'd like to see in the way of horde takedowns. I didn't get the blue flashing question mark, but I'm going to check it out anyway. In my playthroughs, I usually don't play with the minimap, so I'm not really looking at that bottom corner for any indication of anything, which is why I am should have paid more attention. It's like, you'll get, if there's marauders around or a potential side situation occurring, it will pop up as a blue question mark on the minimap. I just, it's not my habit to look down in that corner. I'm just so used to looking ahead. <laughs> so I can uh, like wipe out little, little buggers like that. <laughs> oh, there's a bottle there. Early on, definitely, Molotovs are one of your best friends. And I will always, yep, take the opportunity to craft as many as possible and to keep in the satchel as many of those items to be able to craft them at all times. Too bad. Uh, nope, we are going to avoid water still at this point until we get the upgrades. Yes, I am flooring it. <laughs> oh my gosh! I remember playing the first playthrough, having to deal with the speed of the bike, but I, I never, never really realized how excruciatingly slow it is. All right, that's our next target. One last whore to take care of. A little bit easier than the 300 we just dealt with. It is the Shamult Station Horde. And I've seen this tactic used. And I will set up the bike right here as a partial barrier to avoid getting overwhelmed. And there they are, they're sneaking into their train cars right now to take their nap. Probably returning there from uh, a water run or a feed run. And I don't think I have a smoke bomb here. Because I think I ran out of supplies for it. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Let's get her ready. Yeah, I missed out on a can. I was looking for one, but didn't find one. Here we go. 
I'll try and slow him up so I can take advantage of that uh, incendiary device. Which didn't take out that many. <laughs> yeah, smoke bomb would have been good there. But that's all right. I'm not really afraid of these guys. I know what's coming. I know the deal. But here we go. So if you stay left, you can see that most of them will congregate to the left. And if you back up enough, they won't swarm you. They'll sort of start giving up. Once you pass a threshold, which is perfect. This is this is great. Considering my uh, acumen with uh, ranged weapons, such as these uh, guns, a few at a time, I can deal with that. You know, get a few over here once they hear the noise. There we go. Just need some space. Oh, two, two down in one shot. Love that. Yeah, I'm in pretty good shape. And that's why for me, stamina is a godsend. And that's great. Again, just take them on in waves. Nothing says that you have to take them all on in one shot. <laughs> yeah, that noise is... Uh... Gonna bring them back. Eventually I'm gonna run out of ammo, but... There are supplies nearby where I can uh, rearm. Oh, he was just hanging out. Well, the bike got knocked over, but uh, the pile of bodies is uh, <laughs> serving quite nicely as a wall. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost out now. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that worked out really well. Yeah, that's completely out. And that's not going to be enough. Okay. Yeah, a lot of them are back sleeping in the train car. There's something I can use. Let's wake them up. <laughs> Oh, you're a slippery one. <laughs> but not slippery enough. All right. Eat. 
even though there isn't too many of them left, I'm just going to head over to the cop cars and uh, raid them for some ammo. It's funny that we're going to go back to Diamond Lake to get all our upgrades because we're very close to the exit in order to be able to head back to the Cascades. I heard him, I just didn't really care. <laughs> Again, playing on normal level, the damage isn't severe. If this had been Survival 2, yeah, I probably would have died like a million times already. But the point being is not necessary to worry about the accuracy of the difficulty level, but more so just the strategies employed in being able to get these weapons and showing the methods in dealing with the objectives that we need to finish off in order to get the bike upgrades at Diamond Lake. Okay, now that it's nighttime, they're heading over to their watering area? No, they're feeding now. Okay. But that's okay. Very close to finishing them off now. And if you've been uh, keeping track, this will be the fourth horde being taken care of in this region. Therefore, once complete, we should be getting an indication of our special weapon that we pick up. Uh-oh, the ghosts of the Freakers are busting through. <laughs> Not too many left. Not too many left at all. <laughs> yes, I know, shot him in the back. I have no scruples. <laughs> left? Come on. Where are you guys? There you go. <laughs> I never said this was about marksmanship. <laughs> I keep reiterating that. And there we go. Now watch this. Crazy close to Diamond Lake, but this? How choice is this? the SMP-9 unlocked before the main missions even at Cascades. Not the fastest way to get the SMP-9 by no means. And we picked up a skill point and I forgot about the other one, but here we go. Carry that weight, mastered, essentially doubling the capacity of our ability to scavenge crafting materials and doubling the inventory of actual crafted items in Deke's magic satchel. Except for the medkits. The medkits will always remain at three. You will never be able to get more than three medkits. Everything else, though, has essentially doubled. I can now have six hand grenades six Molotovs, the list goes on. And anything you can scavenge and find, you can now essentially carry double that. So as I'm looking for kerosene, whereas, which, is, which I'll use as the main prime example, ah, nails. <laughs> But scrap as well, instead of 10, you'll be able to carry 20 scrap. As I was saying, for the Molotovs, you'll be able to carry 10 kerosenes as opposed to only five. 
I know the term game changer can be thrown around pretty loosely, but it is. That's it. I know it will grate the nerves of the purists who go, well, why bother? What's the point? You just make the game so easy that what's the point of all that? And that is a fair statement, no doubt about it. There does come some satisfaction with being able to choose a difficulty level and overcoming the challenges of the game in the normal progression of the way it's supposed to be played. And it's definitely not a condemnation of anybody who chooses to play that way. Therefore, you can look at this as more of a thought experiment. What if you could get Deke to a point that he's overpowered with the weapons that he has, the skills that he has, all those Nero juices flowing through his veins. <laughs> and in a little while, heading back to Diamond Lake and pimping out the motorbike to such an extent that you don't even have to worry about any more upgrades once you get back to the Cascades. All right. Thesis discussion over. It's nighttime. I don't want to be riding around. Therefore, it's time to head back to the closest Nero site and a nice comfy bed. I wasn't going fast enough to run him over. Yeah, swing and a miss. <laughs> And after this, there's just one more objective to complete. All right. It's like loser says, you hear a bunk call. And just like that, time to wakey wakey, eggs and bakey. I love both Kill Bill movies. It's horrendously violent, but there is some fascination about some of the skills demonstrated in those movies. Great choreography of the fight scenes. Crazy 88s! <laughs> Two blue question marks, but neither of them are of interest. Ugh, all this water. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I know you're pissed, but I'm uh, my, I'm fo I'm too focused now. I'm just too focused. Anything interesting there? A lot of a lot of dead people and freakers roaming around. Not to mention I almost smashed into the tree yet again. <laughs> nope. These are These are not the rescue missions I'm looking for. Yeah, we're just gonna avoid those. We can, can we? Well. I don't know what freakers were there having breakfast, but at least we avoided the criers. I think pretty much nitrous would be the only upgrades worth considering. But even that, I don't know. Yeah, roadblock going down. The objective now is to head to the location, the encampment, that's literally right outside the main gate of Wizard Island, and rescue a hostage, assuming that the particular scenario will spawn in for us.
and then once that happens, I can finally upgrade the engine to this thing. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, there are a lot of other perks, a lot of other upgrades that are available at level one. But having the engine upgraded, ugh, it'll just make things go faster. <laughs> Because there's a whole other section now, once we've completed this... Okay, so I'm just approaching Wizard Island, because uh, I want to stock up on my ammo, and show you the extra little weapon that we were able to receive by defeating four hordes. Because now, that weapon as well will be available in our locker. I will be swapping out the little stubby for it. Sarge. Almost, almost my friend. Okay, now that's more like it. Yeah, we're Oh, big spender. Yeah, we are spending actually quite a bit. first or what? Okay, yeah. Well, we were at 17,000, but this is the big reveal. Right here. SMP9. Well, it says one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, but that particular today. encampment will probably have more than one marauder guarding the hostage, and we'll need to take out hey, you sleep with that gun, their numbers right? pretty quickly. The corporal. New guy? Name's Caleb. Caleb Tomlinson. Deacon St. John. Yeah, I, I just rode in. Bye. <laughs> hey, corporal. See you later. See you later, corporal. You betcha. Okay, here we go. This is it. This particular encampment will have multiple marauders. Therefore, it's very important to get the marauders closest to the hostage out of the way. Now, once you pass this building, hang a left until you see the rocks there and that log right there and the truck that's your cue and there's the flashing question mark dead ahead of us and i've got the suppressor we'll see if that makes a difference but the hostage will be on this side of the campment anyway Well, somebody went down. There's somebody just sitting right there. I still don't know where it's coming from. Okay, now I gotta. Uh, now I gotta get. Yeah. Help. We're not gonna give up looking for you. When we find you, you're not gonna like what we do to you. If you give up, we'll be all gentle like. Yeah, I don't think so, pal. One more. And fortunately, they're coming from way down there. Come on. Done. Help! I need help! You're gonna be okay. You're gonna die out here. I know of a camp where it's safe. No, no, where? This is also important. We want to send them to Diamond Lake. Diamond Lake. There's a militia camp. You gotta ask for Captain Curry. Oh my god. Thank you so much. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die in there. Yeah, let them know it was Deacon St. John. They know me. Keep your head down and run. And that's it, people. Frag grenade. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> Box of nails! <laughs> But that's it. Level two has been achieved at Diamond Lake. Oh, wow. Look at that. Pipe bomb and a tractor. Oh, that guy was worth killing. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, some more kerosene, which we can... Oh, here's that box of nails again. Uh, can we not have boxes of nails? There's so many boxes of nails. 
But that's it. That was the last objective to achieve level two at Diamond Lake. And once we get there, we've also accumulated enough cash with all the objectives that we cleared out that upgrading all those particular items, adding them to the bike, will not be a problem. Okay, everybody else was a bust, but that one guy was definitely worth taking down. And again, we're so close to, to Diamond Lake, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump. Let's get on over there. I'm stoked. I'm really stoked. Not even worrying about gas at this point. Just a short trip. And I'm just gonna take a quick detour and show you all just as we're approaching uh, Diamond Lake that if you head over to the right there, that burned out box <laughs> that used to be a building of some sort is where you can find the superior metal axe. As I pointed out before, when we got the first one at the campsite on the other side of the Let's see. small lake there. Yeah, there you go. 70% for 100%. Good trade-off. And those will respawn as well. There are actual 10 locations Open up. around Crater Lake where you can pick up the superior metal axe. But right now, it's all about this. Yeah, that 17 grand isn't gonna last too long once I'm finished here. Oh, that's a weird. That's a, that's a mistake. By uh, the bottom left corner, it's showing Wizard Island at level two and Diamond Lake at level one when it's obvious that Diamond Lake Sorry, is at level uh, two. What can I get you? What can so, you get me? Uh, where are you from, Lucas? Well, uh, let's start with accent. something simple, shall we? That obvious. Yeah. Like uh, having a good engine. <laughs> yeah, I was down <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Awesome. Now let's get that fuel tank. Take that thing out of the out of the mix. Save a couple of hundred bucks and I'll take that yeah, one. Thank you very much. Engine repair in Calgary at the Technical Institute. Oh, you ever been? No, no, I guess not. Uh, anyways, the Colonel, yep. he, uh, he gave me That's maxed out. Now, and uh, we'll take, yes, we'll take frame three, please. <laughs> How about a suspension? Sure, throw that in. Oh my goodness. Nitrous we already got. But the tires, you know. Let's see about the radiator first. I want to get, yeah, the radiator's Good nothing. 200 bucks. Right there. And then the tires, topping it out. Okay. Two more grand. And even 1,500 left over. Beautiful. Oh my. Yep. I'm dying to test this puppy out right now. I, yeah, see ya, Lucas. Now, it, does, it shows we don't have a lot of fuel left. But with the size of the tank that we have, I, I really don't think that that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> so I'm just gonna... <clears throat> Shall we let loose a little bit? That was the old way. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Okay, I just gotta slow up, make sure I don't like run into a mountain at this speed. Holy jeez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
I'm just going to retrieve the gas can of infinity <laughs> because those things are just infinitely full all the time. I think if they really wanted to make it interesting, they should have... That should be one thing that doesn't respawn. Not that it would necessarily change much in the game, because there's a glitch that you can perform to actually duplicate the gas cans. <laughs> and just spawn as many of them as you want. You'll never run out of gas again. Yeah, look how slow it's going now. Chug, 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 chug a lug! I don't think I'll have to refuel until I get back to the Cascades, to be honest. <laughs> That's mission accomplished as far as giving Deke all the overpoweredness that I can give him at this point in the early game. If that's uh, enough for you, I really appreciate you watching. For the bonus section of the video now, if you're interested in watching the road back to the Cascades, we're going to be making some stops over in Lost Lake and Iron Butte because there are some very intriguing and amazing loot locations to be able to up Deke's inventory of items that he can carry. And with the carry that weight skill now available, we'll be able to sock away quite a bit of stuff in that magic satchel of Deke's. As far as encounters go, I don't suspect it's going to be extremely crazy on uh, this difficulty level of normal. <laughs> oh my, yeah, we can open up the bike now. Look at that puppy go. Do I care about blowing fuel at this point? I do not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I'll coast still. Yeah, this is this is uh, <laughs> much much different than put putting around at that first engine uh, that uh, Manny gave us. All right, it's time to say sayonara to Crater Lake and Wizard Island for now because now it's time to get back to the Cascades and start playing the game. <laughs> I wonder, is Boozer dead? Yeah, I know, I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> I'm sure he's just been sleeping, just relaxing that good old O'Leary Mountain. Meanwhile, Deke has been putting on the miles. <laughs> yeah, I'm going so fast now that I'm just making jumps. <laughs> Completely over the water, awesome. I just wanna see how much fuel I actually used up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. And uh, that SMP9 comes in handy. Oh, 10% 10 10 of the fuel. Like we traveled so far across the map already. Items of respawn. I don't want to touch the tin. Ah, he picked up the tin anyway. I hate when that happens. But yeah, now you can see.
that the Molotov has six capacity, even though we have three. But now we can craft three more and accumulate so much more crafting materials and just stuff them away in the uh, satchel. Now we'll take care of the medical situation because I know there's a bandage in here from before. And yeah, there we go. So now we can carry six complete Molotovs. Six attractors. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want the focus. But now when you're scrounging around, and you can see that these items have respawned since the last time we were here. Oh, you box of nails. <laughs> yeah, let's... Uh... Let's check out what we got. I'm going to go back to the little stubby for now. As I bow to the locker. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, locker, for providing all this wonderful ammo. Namaste. <laughs> all right. I'm going to take a different route out of here. As opposed to going through the tunnel and heading over to the Chamult station. Uh, I'll show you a different way out. Uh, only because... Along this route, there's a plethora of crafting items just laying out on the road. And show you something a little different too. Some new scenery that you haven't seen before. And you can see that there's a ton of gas cans over here as well. But there's some nice, uh, nice loot with regards to scrap and some kerosene. No, no, this one. That's correct. <laughs> Sorry, kitties. There's some, yeah, there's some marauders over there. Don't care. Uh, yeah, there's a gas can over there. Gas can way in the distance over there. Some more kerosene and scrap. And you can see that we've exceeded 10. We're now at 11 scrap because of the carry that weight. More kerosene there. I'm just going to go further on down the road a little bit. And then we'll be coming back this way because the way out is back up that road. Another gas can. Some more scrap. Plenty of cop cars if you're looking for ammo. Now, in order to exit the region, we're actually returning back to the same spot that we came in at. I love, the, I love the sound of things. The sound design in this game is awesome. But look at that. Now we're at 13 scrap. And we're just picking up kerosene bottles all over the place. I 
it's truly awesome to be able to really let the engine out and have such a velocity to, to, to ride around and not even see the needle barely move on, on the gas supply now. Here's another location, by the way, you can pick up a few things. All respawn. Oh, there's a can. Well, finally, I could probably do a smoke bomb at least. There's a bottle and a machete. But once you have the superior metal axe, there's uh, probably nothing else that you'll want to use. But it doesn't preclude the fact that you can, by all means. I think this is all about experimentation and just having fun equipping yourself with whatever loadout you choose to, to play the game on. Uh, most freakers are chasing their dinner. Meanwhile, we're approaching our exit point. Okay, here's where we get out of here. And you'll definitely want to do a save game at this point, because getting out is a little bit more complicated, and it may require a few attempts so there's the route we took. We went north around that snowy area. But here we go. So just to the right of that crack and that you want to go straight enough to just have Deke's front wheel push to the left to make it into that groove. And then we're back out the way we came in. So go straight up, and once you see the rock, you hang left, whereas before we took a right, and then just slalom between these tall pines with the partial snow up, at, up their trunks. And then we want to head left to try and find the pylon for the ski lift. There we go, right there. Now we're going to be deviating a little bit from our entry point, which is why I'm heading more to the left, because we're not actually going to cross the ridge line to head back the way we came. No, we're going to follow the ridge line. And I use that uh, tree right there as another possible uh, save point because it's all white out. You can, you can barely see in as soon as I moved it up there couldn't couldn't see anything but we're just going to follow the funky texture all the way across and after a certain point you can actually coast a little bit not that you need to because again you have more than enough fuel now with the sizable gas tank to, to make traversing all the regions really more simplistic than uh, than it was before. And then once you get to this grove of trees where the texture sort of ends, just take a little sharp cut of it on the corner there. Through those trees, those that triple tree, and head left when you see the rock. And we're just going to stop and make a save at this location. There is an entry point here. It's the Santium Pass Nero checkpoint. Which will give you access to Lost Lake. And that cluster of buildings over there is actually the old sawmill. Where there's a horde of 500 freakers and an MMU nearby. We will actually visit that on our return trip. But right now, we're going to continue across the mountain to be able to get to the Iron Butte region. Therefore, from here, it's, again, because it's pretty much white out and we're traveling off the map, the route to get there 
is not straightforward and we want to make our way in the same general direction but the precise path is is not what I'm worried about here because there's a ridge line that will come across where the texture will be funky once again and that's why I'm being very cautious with my speed because I do not want to blow through there we go okay there's the texture there we go that's it so we'll follow the texture along its edge and now we're entering a grassy region that's good indication that's good you can see the edge pretty well defined I know Matt's how long you been up here huh setting up ambushes hit supply runs and at this rock when it glitches, you can see just for a moment, there are patches of, I guess, ice that you can cross over. Now again, we're gonna travel along the edge of the funky texture in order to cross at another point. <laughs> I would highly suggest making game saves, quick saves at this location. This one isn't too bad, Crossing here should not glitch out. It looks funky, but you should be able to traverse it pretty easily. But I want to make it so that we end up crossing right here at the Thielsen Pass Tunnel, which incidentally is the actual path you'll take from the north to the south as Iron Mike leads you through it in the Riding Nomad Again section of the game. <laughs> there I go. <laughs> banging in the trees but as you saw there's uh, no glitch that you had to worry about this time now it's a matter of trying to remember certain landmarks <laughs> because there's a blocked off tunnel entrance right there that will be the way down onto the road I believe there's another holographic rock somewhere around here yeah, just yeah, we're we're close. We're getting close now. I just got to go a little straight and right. Okay. Yeah, I think these they look like rocks you got to climb, but ta-da! There you go. <laughs> and uh, now we've uh, made it to the uh, top of the tunnel. And we've got uh, some people to take care of. Hello. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I love being able to take out more than one at a time, though. Certainly makes up for that 9mm debacle at the beginning of the game. But there you go. There's the Tielsen Pass tunnel. That will lead us into Iron Butte and will lead us to a location very close to some nice loot items. All right. Ideally, I wouldn't advise traveling at night. I'm just in a hurry. <laughs> this is the scavenging part of the video. Therefore, it's uh, not expected to be full of high-speed chases or horde attacks or marauder ambushes. Uh, it's really just if you're interested in collecting as much loot as possible before we head back to the Cascades. Now, don't worry about that. That is the point. We want to be able to ride through and pass the border region to get into Iron Butte, which we now are. This is the uh, this is the part where it's nighttime and it's inclement weather. Therefore, more freakers will be out and about. What I'm trying to do now is locate the Ripper 
tower outpost. <laughs> yeah, of course. Which is, oh, there we go, dead ahead. Okay, and that ledge right there. I think we're being chased. Yeah, we passed really close to that freaker. Come on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Looks like uh, having the high ground wasn't very advantageous for that encounter. All right, there we go, on the map. It's literally right across straight from the security gate of Sarah's old work compound. Therefore, if you make it over there and then just straight shot it, you'll see the tower and all the loot is at the top of it. And I'm just scooching it along the side to side because I can't move up and down just to show you the squiggly way that we made our way across the mountains to get to the tunnel, entrance, and then onto the road. As you can see, this is quite a bountiful loot location. Even though there were four items, it only shows you three. And if you needed more ammo, and you needed a Molotov, this tower is definitely a good loot location. And once again, it respawns after, I think, four sleep cycles or two in-game days. Not 100% sure on that, but it will take time to respawn. Therefore, don't expect to make an attack on somebody and then be able to rush right back here and pick up more loot. It's just not gonna happen. They do require some time to respawn, but they do. Therefore, if you're interested in farming this area for loot, you can definitely spend some time, even right now, just staying in the region. You'll need to open up a MAMMU, which is at the Rogue Camp Tunnel, and currently guarded by a Ripper detachment. <laughs> But with the weapons uh, that that uh, D currently has, it would it would not be a problem to take them out. What I am interested in getting, though, is another weapon, if you can believe it. And it's near another horde. But the beauty about this particular weapon is it's out in the open. You literally just have to ride up to the location and grab it off the back of a truck. And this is the location that we're riding to. It's where the Iron Butte Horde resides. And as we park uh, near that light and the sign, and right in that truck on the back of it, with the Horde in the background, is a US 556. The stats on it are comparable to the PPSH 41 that you're already carrying that we already picked up from Wizard Island The downside being of course that it's not added to your locker. Therefore, it's not something that you can Swap out to the PPSH 41 and then get back later unless you travel here and Get it again because it will respawn in this location Having picked that weapon up as adding to the overpowered inventory of weapons that Deke already has, we will be traveling to another loot location. And it's essentially a straight shot. And now that we are actually in a region, we can mark it. <laughs> I can't mark it to exactly where it's going to be, but that's essentially the route we can take now. And we're just, it's like, it, the fun never ends. It doesn't stop. We can just keep plowing Deke with uh, more items. Here's another great weapon to have early game. By the time we get to the Cascades, will will anybody even want to confront Deke in any manner? Because <laughs> he's going to be riding up on his pimped out ride with the armament that he has, I'd be scared of this guy. Like, he's a one-man army at this point. 
and the, the puny little missions and the tiny hordes compared to the regions we were at, Crater Lake, and the hordes we took out there. The, the puny hordes <laughs> in, in Cascades are going to be a cakewalk. All right, so we rode up to these houses and we just continue on straight. We're even uh, through the crossroads to this ledge right here. Just hop the ledge. When you get to the tree, make a left. There's the waypoint on the map. It literally was a straight shot from Iron Butte, following the contours of the roads. And just, boom, straight. And we'll just uh, scoot up a few more ledges to be able to get to another small encampment of poor campers. Well, that one took a, an axe to the back. Yeesh. But right there, out in the open. Oh, we got a med kit on that guy. But right there, ammo, a tractor, remote bomb. These are definitely later game items that you're not even going to have, if I can coin that phrase, remotely have access to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, awful, awful. All right, back to the task at hand. There is yet one more wonderful loot location that we can pillage. And it's uh, really not that far from uh, the one we just left. Just look for that uh, huge rock. And it's going to be not that ledge over there. Nope. Too tall. There's one over here, though. It's literally a short, very short trip over. But again, well worth it to pick up the loot that's just sitting out here in the open at the top of this lookout, which is fantastic. I mean, arguably. The scenery is amazing. But also quite eerie when you're looking at it at night. Just so calm and so isolated out here. But at this uh, encampment, you've got a med kit and four other items. It'll only show the three, but there's a frag grenade in the mix and a pipe bomb. And then the proximity bomb and the proximity mine. And then another ammo tin if you need it. Yeah, I know. It was a little bit of overkill there to take the med kit. But again, it'll respawn, so not to worry. That will conclude the pillaging of loot locations in the Iron Butte area. And now it's time to head over to Lost Lake and uh, pillage a few locations over there. I mean, we have a bike now that can outrun anything. <laughs> I'm not worried about freakers, which is another reason why I'm not too worried about traveling at night. I'm also on a normal playthrough. Just to remind you of that, therefore the spawning of enemies and is going to be I, it, probably not as intense as trying to do this on Survival 2. How much have I got left? I'm halfway through, but take note, that's halfway through when we gassed up outside that small cabin near Diamond Lake, and we're only halfway through. I mean, that is, we could totally make it back to the Cascades at this point without having to fill up. Uh, I'm just going to do it out of habit. <laughs> but yeah, uh, does it make a difference? Does it really make a difference? Oh yeah, I think it does. That's it. When you're not spending 
so much of your time just worrying about your gas supply, I honestly think that even just if you pursued getting level one at Diamond Lake for the privilege of having the gas capacity of your tank increased as much as it has is probably worth it even if you decide not to upgrade the engine. Having both is obviously a bonus. But if I were to... <laughs> if I were to have one of those would you rather go through the extra objectives to attain level 2 to get engine 3, the best engine in the game, or settle for only getting level 1 and upgrading the tank to its largest capacity. I'd be curious to hear your take. Let me know in the comments. All right, I'm just gonna hit up a few more loot locations as I make my way across the map and get back out and into the Cascades. First stop being a visit to Iron Mike's. The only thing there is a mechanic Therefore, I'm not going to be able to turn in any Freaker Ears to get ahead of the game in any way. Nor will there be a merchant where I can resupply. We're going to save that for the MMU that's near the sawmill hoard. And have that prepped for when the story eventually brings us here. Or, honestly, even... If you decide to hang out in the Lost Lake and Iron Butte regions and take care of a few things on your own. That's always a possibility. And there are two MMUs you can at least open up and give yourself a place to fall back to. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Spinning my tire. Okay, yeah, th thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm still getting used to the bike, guys. It's like it's too powerful for me. I, I think I think I've given it too much power <laughs> for my experience level with this thing at right this moment. But they took care of the freakers for me, so not totally useless as far as tower guards go. And uh, I appreciate that, fellas. Thanks a lot. All right, the main purpose of visiting Lost Lake is really to just give you another option with regards to hostage rescues or survivor rescues from Freakers. And at least by passing through, you'll be able to send them here as an option. As we were riding through the camp, of course, there's nobody to collect bounties, there's nobody to sell us any weapons or ammo, and there's nobody to deliver our meat to. To trade that in for any credits. The only vendor was the mechanic. Which leads us to a very interesting situation when it comes to being in this region. Because although I'm doing a quick pass through just to show you all the more substantial loot locations that you can pillage valuable items from, there's nothing to preclude you from staying in the region and going after a few hordes that have already spawned in, and some infestation nests, and ambush camps, to get credits and trust at Lost Lake. What I'm doing firstly though, is to go to the MMU. And I want to open that up, even though we're very close to the sawmill, and the horde is there. But right now, I'm just interested in stealthily and quietly taking out all the speakers. I didn't arm myself with the crossbow, so unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck having to use the ammunition and the suppressor. Oh boy, oh boy! Box of nails! Arr! <laughs> And there they are. A little bit of a feeding frenzy at night. They kind of only congregate there, and then during the daytime they sleep. They don't, this is the one 
horde that uniquely does not have a watering location at night that they kind of run off to. They, they stick it within the sawmill. Which is a good thing. Because then you're not going to accidentally run into 500 freakers. <laughs> now the importance of opening this MMU and then there's another one just up the road at the Santium Tunnel, which is, by the way, the entry point to Lost Lake, if you're coming from the Crater Lake region. Hey, here's the generator. You can deviate off the path I took and then just find your way down to the tunnel entrance by oh, dropping off a few cliffs, which is shown in another video of mine. which if you stay until the end will be uh, what you can uh, click on after you watch this one. That's it. No funkiness uh, beyond just taking care of those speakers and green lights, green lights are good. Green lights are always good. Starting the Jenny. Now here is where it gets interesting. Because, okay. right. as I mentioned, so Lost Lake does there. not have a merchant to sell you weapons. Yes. Neuro ejector. However, if you go to the locker at, the, at this and or the Santium Tunnel MMU, you can rearm your that. weapons. As the info card just came up to show you, by opening up the MMU, you've already gained trusted iron mics and some cash. So it doesn't matter that iron mics doesn't have a weapons merchant, you can still go to the locker in the other trailer, open it up, and rearm even these weapons that you just picked up. Because like I said, the tins in the cop cars and out in the open world and the lockers are magic. Whatever weapons they detect you have on hand, you will be supplied the proper ammunition for those weapons. And we just did a little bada boom and swapped night today. Because we're going to the next loot location, which is a tiny little lake just diagonally south east of here yep we've maxed out on the kerosene which is amazing considering we do have the carry that weight ability skill I'm gonna try and grab that rag but it's going to give me the box of nails! <laughs> yeah, it's a running joke. Is it, is it dead now? Is it dead? Okay, I think it's dead. Just look at that souped up bike. Ah, oh, that is a thing of beauty. All right. So saying so long to the MMU for now, but again, now that it's open, you have the 1900 bucks at Iron Mike's and already starting on the trust at Iron Mike's. But we're on our way back to the Cascades. I'm trying to find the most efficient way to get back there, but right here at this little lake is another juicy loot location. You got your ammo tin, but more importantly, another frag grenade, proximity mine, a tractor bomb. So there's that location, just a just a little ways, not that far. 
a couple of sleeps at uh, the sawmill MMU and you can respawn that location many times until you've walked away with a full inventory of those items. And with the carry that weight, you can now carry six of them. There is one other primary location, which is going to be at Sherman's camp. But along the way, there are a few craft items that we can pillage. And although there's quite a few supplies actually in the sawmill itself, uh, if you want to take on the horde first, just to get a few more items, by all means. <laughs> but this is an awesome location for bottles or nails. Yeah. Bane of my existence. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's dead. I know it's dead. And then, once you've uh, looted that, there's some more crafting items here in the tunnel. Mostly related to smoke bombs and... Oh, jeez. I thought I was far enough away from you. <laughs> I am so happy I no longer have that 9mm, I gotta tell you. Like, if that was... If that was one weapon, if I had only one weapon to bring back with me, the little stubby would be it. Yeah, the focus cocktail and stamina cocktails all can use all these uh, supplies, which it tells you. And later in the game, when you're getting the Napalm Molotovs, there are plenty of Growlers in this location as well. And they all respawn. Once you've looted them, they will respawn. Alright, it's off to Sherman's Camp for the final location. To nab some awesome loot. And then it's just a short trip back to the Cascades from here. Yeah, I don't want to ride too fast because I've crashed into that log a few times. And as you know, with the tree incident, which we will no longer talk about after this. <laughs> try not to uh, go too crazy on the bike and blast through the off-road because... It's like everything in almost every video game. They know where to strategically put obstacles. When they know you're riding around That's on something. Infestation zone. Sure smells like it. <clears throat> so one I'll of the two locations is here at the Das Habaneros. <laughs> just up the oh, stairs and just on that ledge dust, dust, behind the goes. sign. Some ready-made smoke bombs. Unfortunately, I picked up the tin at the same time, so that was a waste of a tin. They're just too close sometimes. I mean, the idea, I think, is that when you're reaching for something, you might as well just grab everything all at one area of uh, influence. But it's right up here. Where you will find two attractor bombs and two flashbangs. Nice. Let me just get back down there. Oh, okay. All of a sudden, <laughs> the party started. Well, not hanging around. Getting back to the Cascade, sorry, but don't worry. I'll be back. Yep, 
skipping out on you guys this time. Usually there are marauders uh, fighting off a couple of freakers when you enter the town. But again, completely random events and totally dependent on the difficulty level. Obviously on these easier levels, like easy and normal, they're not going to run into as much difficulty. And like I said, Copeland's is just over there, and that's our route. And then, day 745, <laughs> Boozer's been uh, holed up in the uh, O'Leary Mountain hideout for a while. <laughs> but it's right there. Once we cross the threshold, as you can see, I can't move the cursor any farther south, but that's our threshold to go back to Copeland's camp. And with our newly acquired weapons and bike upgrades, go ahead and start the game a little overpowered. I gotta finish burning out this infestation. One last stuff. obstacle is a potential sniper attack. Right here, yep. Sniper right on cue. Shit. Now the good thing is we're actually gonna be hidden behind the tree as we make our approach. So he's not going to be able to take a shot at us at all. We'll be able to walk right up to him and take him out. Of course, once we do that, other marauders might spawn in. Whoa! <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> uh, okay. That was weird. She just popped in and died. If only most of the game on Survival 2 could have that happen. I don't have that happen very often, and that was weird. <laughs> okay, but we're done. We have looted all we're going to loot, and it's just a matter of getting back to Copeland's. And finally deciding that, yeah, now's a good time to head up to that MMU and look for some sterile bandages. Let's do that. Poor guy. Must feel like we abandoned him. Although, I'm sure he's just been sleeping all this time. Because that's all he does. For the first part of the game, until you get him to Lost Lake, I think even after you get him to Lost Lake, he just kind of like, sleeps. Recovers. I mean, let's face it, his arm did get burned off. And he's going to go through a few more trials and tribulations before the game is over, but as soon as you pass those two trees, the game will just clip you right here at the border of the route that's supposed to normally take you into the Lost Lake region. And uh, yeah, no, it's not gonna be able to be crossed normally. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm just going to refuel right here. 72%. <laughs> Sorry, I love that gun. And we've essentially come full circle from where we started. Because that's where we opened up our very first injector. Well, you technically really didn't need it, but... That's it. It'll be interesting to hear about your playthrough in the comments to see how far you can make the gas last. All right. Still got to watch out for a possible sniper attack behind this rock or maybe a marauder. Oh, nothing? Okay. Oh, no. Somebody. Ah, missed the bridge. Of course. Whoa! There we go. <laughs> you 
You know, pal, next time, aim for the head. All right. Making our way back to where we started. Open the gate. I think I think Deke is um, in a in a really good position to take on the rest of the game from this point. What do you say? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So we've got the superior metal axe in our possession. Already five frag grenades. We're full up on the Molotovs. Proximity mine, remote bomb, proximity bomb, three attractors, four attractor bombs. Yeah, this is uh, more than enough, I'd say. And then, of course, the 556 five, and the RPD. Which, of course, you when you head to the merchant here, who's got nothing, <laughs> but we can fill up the assault, uh, 556 ammo, the RPD ammo, and of course the little stubby ammo. And nice. you can see right there, all the suppressors aren't even available. You gotta, you gotta go all the way back to Wizard Island if you want suppressors. And of course we've got the SMP9, which can also be filled at this merchant. And we've got the PPSH as our primary weapon, but I'm just gonna return it to the locker and keep the US 556 on hand for just a little while. Whatever. Now, unfortunately, I was more of a hurry to get back here and didn't take the opportunity to get some venison oh, uh, for the camp. Hey, Deke. But we've uh, hey, uh, definitely got enough freak ears from our yeah, adventure and now just have to decide where we want to turn them into. Either here or hot springs. Oh, there we go. We've got engine three. It won't take that much longer to get level one now with the, the arsenal that we have to make the bike a little quieter. But we've got that massive tank that you've already seen the range that that thing has. It's incredible. You could probably ride around both the Cascades and Hot Springs on one tank. <laughs> Should have more stuff later. Yeah, Manny, you see the bike now? This is what I want. This is what you should have given me when you when you stole my bike. I had to go through all this and get it myself, punk. <laughs> That's not his fault. He didn't know. Whew. All right. Was that an adventure or what? I feel like I've already finished playing the game. Is there anything left? Well, of course, there's tons left in the game. In fact, not that far. At the power station, you can find another cache of loot. I appreciate you for joining me on this incredibly wild and lucrative adventure. And if you're keen to replenish your supplies along your gaming journey, check out this video to discover alternate routes and exploits to revisit all the loot locations and take on some hordes to up your bounty collection too. Be good to yourself and those you meet out there. See you on the next one.